It's awesome. <laughs> Yo. Oh no, Thomas. Are Thomas you is muted. Muted. Yeah, Thomas. <laughs> It's fitting that I'm gonna have technical issues for our last oh, episode of the year. <laughs> But again, hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Welcome one and all to the Dukes of Gaming podcast. You already know it's your boy, the host, the Duke of Procrastination, Thomas. And it's good to have everybody here. It's good to have a full set. We're going to have a full house here. How is everybody doing? First and foremost, we have the Duke of Nostalgia. How are you doing, Taylor? Doing great. Had a great Christmas trip. Just got back from New York City. Great time. Stayed safe. Took the protocols, you know. There we go. Of course, we have the Duke of Rocket League. How are you doing, Cole? Good. Had a great Christmas. I am really pumped for the new year. I don't know why. I've never been this excited for a new year. I, I feel like I feel like I'm always sad after Christmas. But for whatever reason, I'm really excited about next year. And I think it has to do with the games. I picked up something I've never I've never done this before while gaming. But My best friend used to do it in college. He used to have candles lit when he was playing video games and it like set the mood. So I bought this candle and it's, uh, it's called leather, leather plus embers. So I'm getting ready for Elden Ring. I feel like that's going (laughs) to light my room up ready for Elden Ring. So I'm excited. Dude, that's so funny. Good to see you. When I played Bloodborne for the first time, I was just in like a, in a incense burning phase yeah yeah <laughs> so i was burning incense the entire time i was playing bloodborne and now like i can't think about bloodborne without smelling oh that that's incense. awesome that's awesome <laughs> that's awesome and that, it that heightens course, experience and that of course is the duke of design ben hope you had a good christmas hello yes it was great um i had we were this close guys we were this close to greatness the night before christmas i look out the window and there's a light covering of snow over everything i'm like ooh. It's gonna be white Christmas. Here we go. My son has never experienced snow. This is this is uh-huh. great. I wake up in the morning. It's all gone. There's not a trace. Not a trace that it <laughs> uh. even happened. But on the 26th, the night of, or uh, I guess two nights ago, um, we got dumped on. So we got nice lots of snow. Nice. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. So just so after much. Christmas, a so white post Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna hate snow. I'm jealous. And I hate snow. <laughs> what you monster we do the conversation for another day because we also have to introduce the duke of education how are you doing alfredo that's me i'm doing great but obviously down in georgia i didn't get any snow and instead i got 70 degree weather <laughs> that Same you know here. That's yeah weird. that i just you know went on a run with my dog in a uh in a tank top so you know a oh. little bit of a different experience than the duke of design but you know i'll take what i can get well, good Which to is no hear. Snow. Well, good so to nothing. hear. Good to hear. Good to hear. So, I know I'm usually the host, but I'm gonna give the reins over to. Hold ben. on, hold on. You forgot someone. What? Duke of Nostalgia? Didn't you? No, I, I went wrong? first. I went first. Oh, sorry, I nope. was. I got it. He was first. He was <laughs> first. I, was hey, I appreciate it. Hot, looking out for me. That's weather. Alfredo. Always looking out. That's That's always looking right out. There. That's love right there. <laughs> the hidden, he forgot the hidden Duke. We'll reveal him at a later date. <laughs> I was like, is there a new <laughs> <Clearly>. Duke? <laughs> so, like I said, I'm going to hand the reins over to our Duke of Design, Ben. He's going to kind of explain what we're going to do for our game of the year. Go ahead, Ben. All right, guys. Game, game of the year discussion time happening. Um, we've been putting it off for long enough. Now it's time. Uh, so, we're doing, uh, we're doing a weird system that just kind of came to me that um, I think could be fun and cause lots of conflict and strife, which is uh, exactly what you want they in the game of your, of your discussion. Um, we are only, obviously, we're only selecting from a pool of games that were released this year. Whether or not they're re-releases of old games does not matter. If they were released this year, they qualify. Um, so what we've done is we've ranked our top three games in no particular order. So each one holds equal value. These are our contenders. We've got three contenders each. And then after that, we've got two runners up. Um, And neither of these are in the running for game of the year, but we're going to bring them up. We're going to discuss them. And if should our opinions on any of our contenders change throughout our discussions, we can graduate our um, runners up into contender position while demoting 
one of our contenders into runner-up position. So I want this to be a little bit more of a fluid discussion where we're we're really discussing these games on the merits and um, keeping an open mind as we go in. Our, we've got our lists now. These are the games that we played and that we feel are worth considering. But that doesn't mean we're not going to change exactly where they fall on this list as we go. We're not going to add anything from outside this list, though. These, these lists are locked. Um, so without further ado, I think we should start by just going over our runners-up, each of us. Um, so Alfredo, uh, Duke of Education, we want to take it away? Me for sure. So are, should we do both of them or should I just do one? Yeah, let's do both of the runners-up. All righty. Okay, so obviously I had a lot of trouble with this because I play too many games for my, my own good. So uh, what I decided was, or that I should at least give some sort of shout out, and I was close to becoming my contender's um, my first game that I picked is a game that probably very few people picked, but I really feel is a hidden indie gem that also came to Xbox Game Pass. And what it did was pick this game called Dodgeball Academia. I think I said it right. Uh, so basically, this is a this is an RPG, a JRPG kind of, but instead of being a turn based rpg it's more of an active time battler where you are throwing dodgeballs literally having a dodgeball fight with the opposing opponent you have stats you have special moves you have different characters that you can swap in and out of your three party three team party basically and uh, everything about this game is so great it capitalizes on saturday morning cartoon aesthetic in that it when you play it it just gives you gives you that nostalgia you really feel like you're a kid again watching the saturday morning cartoons on wb kids or whatever you know nick loading all of those and everything about this from the actual battle system the dodgeball system never gets old it's always fun no matter like if you're level one or level 50 of building out your team or whatever it never gets old the writing is I think it's amazing. It's like my type of humor where it's just very, very jokey, very slapstick, very like self-aware of itself. And it kind of plays on anime tropes as well, which I'm a huge anime fan, so I love it. Um, and yeah, everything about this game is great from its art to its writing to just its overall aesthetic. Um, and you can get it free if you have Game Pass. So I really feel like this game deserved a shout out and was one of my, as it was one of my favorite games that I played this year. Um, so the other game that I picked is a very popular game uh, called Deathloop. Everyone knows the PS5 exclusive. It's my runner up currently. Maybe someone will change my mind. But I picked Deathloop because, honestly, I didn't expect myself to like the game because I personally don't really like FPSs all that much. As far as games from Arcane goes, um, I they never really grabbed me. So with Dishonored and Dishonored 2, I played both of those games, finished Dishonored 1, never finished Dishonored 2 because it didn't really strike me as bringing anything new to the table. But something was different with Deathloop that it really drew me into its world. I really, really enjoyed the way that they told their story, even though it's not through, you know, usual cutscenes. It's more of you have to dig for the information. This game is really about uh, making your own path and discovering things as you come over it, come through it. And if you want more information, you have to go searching for it. I'll leave, you know, I, I'm sure this game will come up in more discussions, so I won't go too in-depth into it, but I really enjoyed Death Loop, but just not enough. I, I think it didn't do anything special for me to have it earned a spot in my top three this year. But yeah, Death Loop and Dodgeball Academy are my two runner-ups. Awesome. Uh yeah, uh, I think de so someone does have Deathloop on their list, um, though I'm, I'm in the same boat with you. I, I it's, it's just been a weird year for games, in my opinion, and, and that is reflected in my list here. I've only got four entries of a, to of a five total because I only I realized that I only played four games that were released this year, and it was 
Uh, Deathloop was the only one that didn't make it into my contender list, which is strange because at the beginning of the year, if you had asked me, I probably would have said that Deathloop would have taken my game of the year uh, nomination easily, right? But so, I mean, it was really, it was Arcane's to lose. And I think in my book, they lost it just because this game is not exactly what I want from an arcane game. But we'll get into that a little bit more when when the uh, when it comes up on somebody's contender list. Clams, what about your runners up? Okay. <clears throat> so I've got two runners up that are both twos. Uh, I have Psychonauts 2. Um, I have Psychonauts 2 because similar to how Alfredo put it, it has strong Saturday morning cartoon uh, vibes. Um, it uh it is funny in a way I like games to be funny. Uh, I like a funny game every once in a while. And and Psychonauts is, is a series that really plays on the humor. Um, uh, it, and, and it doesn't distract from the game. A lot of games will put in humorous moments and it kind of detracts from the gameplay. In this game, it feels so natural. The characters are all goofy. And th- the characters are another big deal with Psychonauts 2 is they're all memorable i know a lot of people are put off by the art style of the psychonauts games um because they're kind of creepy but and and this might have to do with the voice actor of of the main character but it it does give off sort of cartoon network creepy cartoon vibes like billy and mandy or courage the cowardly dog um where it it it's eerie uh, Flapjack is another great example. It's eerie, but it's charming. It's charmingly eerie, and, and I really like Psychonauts 2 for that. I don't think it's a special game. It's it's a platformer that's a lot of fun, but it's nothing incredible, and I think a lot of people wanted Psychonauts 2 to be a lot better than Psychonauts 1, but I digress. It's it's a passable game with a lot of charm. It has so much charm, and it it's, it's a game where the characters in which I, I remember fondly um they're they're not pikachu they're not mario they're not they're not uh, uh captain falcon or whoever but they're 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 contained to their own little fun universe uh my second game is delta rune chapter two uh for a similar reason it's it's fun it's it's funny um i don't personally think uh the um delta runes have have been as good as undertale was undertale was amazing it's hard to top that um Mm. but they're they're close uh the the delta runes are close to how good undertale was um for for one reason um or another i think that delta rune 2 has a very good um group of characters and uh i i don't know i didn't like it as much as Undertale and Undertale has a very special place in my heart as you know, Duke of nostalgia. I, I, I love remembering things. Um, so you don't have to. And, um, Delta rune, the both Delta runes, um, just sort of feel like kind of weaker follow-ups to a, a, a groundbreaking game. Mm. And, uh, it just Delta rune has, has funny moments. And one of the, one of the markers I use for a game's, um, durability or longevity is how how memed it is. And Deltarune had some great memes, uh, specifically with the character of Spamton. Spamton was introduced, and it's he's this funny little dude who uh, just is is so fun and new. Um, he's unlike a lot of the other Undertale characters or even Deltarune characters um, in that he's. It's almost concerning to me that Deltarune has a character that is so one character that is so memorable. I know a lot of people like the little deer girl with the you know antlers and whatnot. I, I think Deltarune Chapter Two has a special place in my heart for being something new again. It's 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 trying to experiment more with characters and comedy and game design, and it's it's a lot of fun. It deserves to be on. It does. It would never be Game of the Year. In a million years, Undertale I think should be Game of the Year for the year it came out. Whatever that was, it was ages ago, 2013, 14. Oh, for every year, um, long time. <laughs> for every year, but but Delta Rune, Delta Rune Chapter Two recaptures some of that 
excitement I had with Undertale that Deltarune one did not. So I, I have to give her credit for that. And that's that's where I am with the, my, my runner ups. It's so funny you mentioned that, too, because I really feel like the Delta Rune series and Dodgeball Academia are very, very similar in the nostalgia factor that they're trying to hit on, as well as the the characters that they build, because I think those uh, that's their strong suit. I would I would counter that. I was taking your example of Do- Dodgeball Academia to uh, Psychonauts, because I think Psychonauts, even mm. though people don't remember the characters as, as fondly, they really do reek of old cartoons. Mm-hmm. They really there's something so special about the comedy that was that that old jaded writers put into their kid shows back in the in the mid 2000s. Right. Psychonauts kind of yeah. reminds me of like nickel like early 90s nickelodeon it's like exactly it. that mm-hmm. it's all it gave me that ren and stimpy vibes you know exactly that yep exactly that so dodgeball though, academia I is think, more cartoon network yeah. yeah oh yeah yeah that's a great but I, I i would put psychonauts above delta room just saying i not not layered or anything but psychonauts to me is a lot better i people don't like it because the characters aren't as cute and funny and cuddly as sans undertale and his and his cute soft bones but <laughs> i think i think those characters if you gave them the time of day have a better place in your heart yeah i i do feel like psychonauts 2 was one of my big misses for games that i probably should have played me too it's a great enjoyed game. a lot There's still time year. i will be yeah. not this year but i'll be playing <laughs> i'll be playing it early 2022 because i I feel more inclined to visit it because I've only heard great things. Yeah, I agree too. I I, I picked it up and I'm going to play it. I actually played I mean, the first 20 minutes. So I'm, I I'm wish I could have put it higher on my list. I wish I wish I could have put it in my actual mentions for game of the year. It's just not the platforming isn't special enough. It is mm-hmm. still rudimentary 3D platforming. I agree. And I, I, I just I wish it was more because I think it deserves more attention because it's mm-hmm. it's a big game. It, it, it's been a long time since the first Psychonauts and everyone wanted Psychonauts 2. And I feel like it kind of got got ignored too mm-hmm. much. Too many people didn't play it. And I, I wish I wish they had. I do. It deserves, it deserves to be played. I do want to piggyback on that because I was I really wanted to put Psychonauts on my list, but I just couldn't because too many games. But I think also another thing that, that Psychonauts 2 specifically does very well is its level design. Oh, Each yeah. Each of its levels are extremely unique, and they have, a you might say it's a gimmick, but it's really fun. Like but the scenario I, yields you get pulled in and what you can do in that world. And I'm going to sell it to you, Ben, Duke of Design. The way those levels that Alfred are describing are are implemented story wise they they it's so seamless you don't feel like you're changing levels because the story just keeps keeps plowing through and you don't you don't even notice it like a cartoon you're just you're just watching you're just experiencing and i i, I really appreciate that from psychonauts everyone yeah and I, the I, first one first one's very good as well yeah yeah I all on game pass <laughs> Stole the virtues of Game Pass. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I got a lot of respect for Double Fine and and uh, their LucasArts lineage and advancing the um, advancing storytelling in this medium. I think they do that uh, very well. Well, Duke of Rocket League surprised us. <laughs> well, I'm, incredible I'm gonna picks. I'm <laughs> gonna surprise you because <laughs> I hate to disappoint being the Duke of Rocket League. Of <laughs> so, uh, my honorable mention is. Rocket League Sideswipe, a mobile game. Mm. Another testament to how weak this year is, and is it got a mobile game on my um, top five list? But it is a Rocket League game, so um, I just thought that this was an amazing. All you guys played it, right? Yeah, or at least tried it. I th- oh man, clams! You got to try it. It's for yeah, free. You, you download it. it. You don't want to download see it phone. right it's now. Literally in two pieces. My phone is in two pieces. It barely works. So, <laughs> like, literally in two pieces. Phone, I'll try it. Um, <laughs> they like did. <laughs> it, it was made by Cyanix. They didn't like. Uh, you know, they didn't contract it out or anything. It was made by Cyanix, which is awesome. They took the feel of Rocket League, bowled it down to a side-scrolling. Uh, I'm having some feedback, some echoing. Are you guys hearing that? Nope. Um, might be just my mic. Oh, I hear anyway. it a little bit. Yeah. Huh. Um, anyway, they bowled it down to a side, like a side scroller where you just, you have jump, you have boost, you have the two goals, um, their match system. They work so good in rocket league. 
works just as smooth and just as great on mobile. And it's just as addictive as Rocket League. It's just the baby version. Um, not much more to say about it. I, I just thought it was really, it was really great. And then it, I probably put 15 hours into it, <laughs> just playing oh, here wow. and there, picking up my phone before going to bed. It's so easy to play. And, uh, and the, the games are three minutes long as opposed to five minutes. You can easily hop in, play four or five games, hop out. Have you reached but diamond yet? I have not. I think I'm, I think I'm gold. I think I'm gold on it. Um, I have not reached champion. It took. Gonna what, grind, are you going to do the champion grind again? <laughs> I don't know. That took y'all. It took me six years. Yeah. <laughs> so, very good. Very good. Six years and probably twenty five hundred hours of playing Rocket League to get there. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that was my number five, or that was my um, honorable mention. Another one is Bowser's Fury, and I know Clams has this on his top three, um, which I might could be persuaded. I thought it was incredible. I didn't play 3D World when it first came out. So I was waiting for this to release. It was one of my, my most hyped games this year. I played it with my son. I had a, had a ball playing it. Uh, Bowser's Fury was awesome. I don't think that's where Mario needs to go to the open world. I don't think it works as good as the kingdoms do in Odyssey. Um, but it was great. I liked it a lot. Um, Clams, you want to chime in on that? Or? Before I'll get to you it when do, I get to sorry, it. Before you do, I want to throw a challenge flag. Are you saying the 3D land? I'm sorry, 3D world and Bowser's Fury? Or are you just saying Bowser's Fury? No, I'm just I'm saying th- I'm saying the whole package is okay. what I'm saying. Honestly, I'm if just, it was, I'm just saying Bowser's Fury. Yeah, see, now if it was if it was just Bowser's Fury, I don't think I would I would not have it in my top five. I Wait, so view- it's two different games. Well, they come in the same package, but right. you can switch it's between. Yes, two, yeah, two different. They're, they're two yeah, different I guess games. it is. Yeah, I guess it is. Okay, so I mean, I did my honorable mention would still be Bowser Fury because the year is pretty weak, so it would still be there. But I put it here because of 3D World. I thought 3D World was incredible. And that game, sorry, I'm uneducated about this, but this is the equivalent to Sackboy Big Adventure, right? Oh, that mm, it's way better. Yeah. Than Sackboy to me. I mean, yeah, like in terms better. of gameplay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Except Mar- it's Mario, so it's just premiere, you know. Um, but yeah, those those though. are my two. Fair enough. Fair just enough. To make, just wanted to make sure because yeah, I if you, I might have been persuaded to put it in my top five if we we're including the world part as well because I love Super Mario um, 3D World. That's a great game. That may be unfair to put it in the. I don't know. I, I feel like that's I mean, stepping it, out of bounds. No, I think I, I think it's valid because yeah, it's, uh, it's, valid. it's the whole package. It's yeah. it, and it's a yeah. release of an old game plus plus what is essentially a standalone expansion of that game. So I, I think it's valid to to lump them in as one thing. It's what you're going to purchase, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the that's, package that's is a great package for sure. Still keeping it. Still keeping. It. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, we've only got one left to go over honorable mentions, and that's you, Thomas. Take it away. Did you go? Yeah, yeah. My only one was Deathloop. <laughs> you only but had did one. you go? At, like yeah. in general? Yeah, I, I brought up Deathloop. I don't need to say much more until Oh, you know, okay. You, that's right. That's right. You you don't have the um other one. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. So my first honorable mention, which is when I thought was gonna be my, my game of the year to start the year. Ratchet and Clank. Um Ratchet what? and Clank ripped apart. Look, I know it's a surprise, right? I, I yeah. had <laughs> I had a great time. This is the only game that came out this year that I platinumed. I don't platinum games often. I just love this series so much. I think I love the direction that we're going in. I think we're going to get some great sequels out of this game. They've kind of set themselves up for the PS5 generation to just have some great follow-ups to this. Won't spoil the game for anybody, but we're probably going to get some new characters, some new spinoff games. I can't wait for that, but for this game, I feel that yes, it's a PS5 exclusive and it looks incredible. I just felt that it didn't do enough. Mm-hmm. It didn't do enough for me to feel like this is something that can only be done on the PS5. Especially since, you know, the big thing was those portals. The portals were the like, oh, that's the next gen thing. It really isn't that impressive. Like, if you really think about it, like, if you, I was playing Portal 2 this year, and I'm like, oh, this is honestly more impressive than what Ratchet and Clank was doing. <laughs> so, it's, and that was the one thing that really felt next gen about it. And so, for me, it just seems like another Ratchet and Clank game. 
to me, it's in my top three Ratchet and Clank games, sitting comfortably at three. But it's definitely not a must play for PlayStation Five owners. Which does this hmm. does this cement your uh, Insomniac as your favorite studio because? They have your favorite game, which is Marvel Spider Man, mm-hmm. of course. <laughs> which, I mean, which, to be honest, Ben, like, if it will be my, like the remaster for Spider Man, will be my game of the year if it came out for in 2021. Yeah. So, yeah, I they still are my favorite developer. They still, to me, are the premier developer for PlayStation just because Naughty Dog, Naughty Dog's great and all, but Naughty Dog makes a game once every like four or five years. And, and they don't speak to you the same way. I mean, right. You've got a so, special yeah, love for different games. Right. But I mean, even, even with that all being said, Ratchet and Clank is a great experience. I had a great time with it. It's to the best looking game on PlayStation 5. So if you want something to, you know, show off your new console, how shiny and how great the games look, get this game. But at the same time, it's not a must play. Well, I don't know if you want to <sighs> if we want to wait till we get this, but this is in my game of the year discussion. Well, you jump with the gun a little bit there, Cole, <laughs> <I> but... <laughs> Well, okay, let's let's get there right after uh, Thomas goes over his next honorable mention. Okay, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, okay, so, and I'll be a little more quick with this one. So, my next honorable mention is Life is Strange, True Colors. I never thought that they would get me back. I thought they lost me. I thought that this franchise lost me. I, I, I love the first game. Like, the first game spoke to me, even though I'm not a teenage girl. At a boarding school, it spoke to me. <laughs> I loved <You're>? it. No. <laughs> News. No, no, I'm not. Get me tricked. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I love True Colors because the first one spoke to me. The second one lost me completely. I think the it lost spin- everyone, honestly. The spinoff lost me completely. Like, it's, I thought I was done with this franchise. And no. No, this is to me the definitive Life is Strange experience. Like, if you want to know, like, why do people like Life is Strange? Play this game. It has, it does everything that I wanted it to do. It expands the formula. It tells a really compelling story. I, I think that this game has no right to be as good as it is from a narrative standpoint. So even I think Alfredo, you watch like a let's play of it. If you want to do it that mm-hmm. way, you can do it that way as well. I don't prefer that way, but you know, if, to experience the story, I just recommend by any means necessary, just watch this watch or play this game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just wanna yeah, if you're done, I wanna yeah, hop no. on to that. Cause yeah, like you said, I did watch a let's play of it. I played the first one and the second one, but I watched the let's play of this because I was in the same exact situation as you. I, I thought they lost me. And this one is my favorite one. Even though I didn't get to play it personally, the True Colors is, I think, the best Life is Strange game. And it's because of everything that you said, Thomas, primarily the narrative. Like it, It's a lot better than you think it would. And what's I think what's really rare is that I was shocked that who makes this don't non did don't non make this game or did they pass um, it on no they passed it on to um a different studio for okay. deck, deck nine deck nine yes okay correct. well regardless i think what's nice about this is that they deck nine was able to learn and uh and really craft and reinvigorate the series by learning upon the mistakes that were made by the previous failures they made it non episodic they came all of it was in one package so you, you didn't have to deal with the episode issues and the delays and all of that and then they just focused on what they do best by making a really great narrative and it, you know it thrived because, because of that i think it's like one of the best selling uh life is strangers or if not the best selling but yeah it's it's a very good game everyone should play it if they have the opportunity the only thing I would say is I don't quite know if it's worth that sixty dollar price point, but definitely if it's on a sale for thirty or forty, I could definitely recommend it there. It's on sale right now for pretty much the majority of consoles, so I recommend it at forty. Yeah, like you said, like I paid sixty, but I can't tell anybody. Yeah, pay sixty dollars for this ten hour experience. I can't really say that per se, but I had a great time with it, and honestly, you would think. The power of, oh, I feel people's emotions. That sounds really stupid. (laughs) Just saying. It sounds really stupid. (laughs) But they made that very compelling. 
And I think they deserve a load of credit. Shouts out deck nine. Very nice. Well, we're in the, uh, we are in real territory now. We're in the end game now. Yeah. <laughs> it Nervous. has begun. Let us talk about the contenders, our, our bids for game of the year. I didn't discuss this earlier, but how we're going to select game of the year is a little different than, than um, I think the intuitive way to do it, which is just to rank <laughs> order them and then assign points. And, you know, that's like, that's like the simple way to do it, but I wanted to complicate things to ruin our lives because uh, I want, what I really want is good conversation at the end of the day. So what I, what we have done here is in no particular order, we've got our three contenders and what will determine game of the year winner overall for us is which game among these contenders shows up in the most people's list. The idea behind this is sort of that if it speaks to enough of us to put it in our top three, then it's overall a good enough game for many different types of gamers that we would recommend it as a, as a game of the year um, win. That, however, means that there can be some games that one or two of us totally hate that end up as game of the year, right? That's just the nature of the beast. Uh, and so, you know, part of this is going to be I think us trying to talk each other in and out of <laughs> our opinions on certain of these games. Um, but with that being said, there there are a couple games we can, we can all see the list right now, um, and I'm not going to spoil it for anybody. I can't. Not, I, I can see it. <laughs> uh, oh, you don't have a um, sheet up? No, um, I, I want to. I want genuine reactions. I'm okay, ready okay. to be shocked and surprised. Gotcha. And Just hopefully not, not disappointed, <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> well, we've got right now. We've got surprisingly, <laughs> it, to my eye, it seems that we have four actual legitimate contenders that have repeats, and they're all tied. <laughs> so this might end up going horribly. But before we get into what those games are, let's just talk in general about the games on our list so cole why don't you start with the game at the bottom of your list okay the bottom of my list is ratchet and clank and the reason is i don't think it does anything particularly special but the fact that it does two things very well makes it special i think um the graphics to me are just as good as keen bridge of spirits um but the gameplay is absolutely top-notch best in class third person arcadey shooter and I feel like like a game like Kina has doesn't have the gameplay. It only has the graphics. Ratchet and Clank have both. I think the story's weak, but I think that uh, it takes Ratchet and Clank to a new level. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, I think it's okay. I mean, it's not <laughs> nothing. I mean, you know, you're, you're, look, you to you to Ratchet and Clank is like Alfredo to Kingdom Hearts. No, no, it's not. It's not that. No, it's not that serious. No, it's not that no. serious. It's not that serious, but we no, but I'm just, I, yeah, it's, it's not, not that serious. Look, it's not weak. I wouldn't say it's weak. I would just say it's to be expected. I didn't, it didn't, st- you know, I'm not saying it's so it's weak is probably bad. Let's just say it's like it's in the range of what I thought it would be. Fair you enough. know, nothing special, predictable, predictable, nothing special, like serviceable, you know, but graphics and gameplay wise, it's, it's, um, pretty much a 10 out of 10. I don't know. I I feel like I have to disagree. This isn't even on my list, but I I feel like it did do something special because I well first I will say that I'm not the hugest Ratchet and Clank fan, although they do have Swords Kingdom Hearts played in it. So you know, <laughs> little bias. But I think I played the first one, the 2016 remake one. I wasn't impressed. I thought the game was overhyped in general. If it was supposed to be a good, you know, a good uh representation of what the series is i thought it wasn't for me and then when this one came out i thought it really blew the 2016 remake out of the water in all aspects i think that the story was very very good i thought that the characters that they introduced the new ones as well as the original ones ratchet and clank had so much more depth and it was so much more engaging that it made me a fan not a fan enough to you know make it one of my picks but i think that it does it does definitely deserve credit where it's due. And I thought they did a lot of things that should be, you know. No, I agree. And that that's why it's in my game of the year discussion. Mm-hmm. I, I was just kind of saying like what I thought was the weaker parts, but like, mm-hmm. yeah, so I guess I would say that I did think the story was good. 
I'm just saying it's that particular part of it. Aspect of the game. I, yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But like the fact that it did graphics and gameplay, and me and Alfredo came into this in the same boat. We didn't, we weren't really Ratchet fans, but it made us Ratchet fans. So like that really makes it special too, you know? Mm-hmm. The fact that it it steps out of that Ratchet and Clank, oh, it's just another Ratchet and Clank game. This mm-hmm. put Ratchet and Clank into a whole new stratosphere for me. So like that is what I feel like makes it special because it really stepped out of its lane, and it this it, it made it to top tier kind of game. This is a kind of cheeky comment, but it, do you remember Final Fantasy fifteen, Alfredo? <laughs> Do you? I unfortunately, yes. Do you remember the first thing you see when you open that game, where it's like the Final Fantasy 15 for newcomers and fans? I don't think I don't think I remember. That's the first thing you see when you start this game. Okay, when you start the game, that's what it says. I think this is the Ratchet and Clank game for both fans and newcomers. Mm. I think this was a great intro. It didn't do a lot like of lore stuff of Ratchet and Clank to get you guys kind of confused. But it also had enough references for somebody like me who's played most of them to appreciate. So I think they did a really good job balancing it up. I think that kind of affected the story because they're trying to do this kind of soft reboot slash continuation of the old story. I'm like, and that kind of like throws off the story to me. But I think it does a good job of appealing to both sides of the coin. So exactly a great example to what you said is the movie star Trek in 2009, it was that kind of thing. Like mm. it, it brought in the new people and it was such an awesome, like just solid experience for new people and everyone. And, and even the old, old fans liked it too, a little bit that, uh, it kind of propelled it into greatness. I love that movie. And I, I do like too. Star- I don't like exactly. Star- I love that movie hey, too. I love ratchet and clink and I don't like ratchet and clink. <laughs> yeah. That's a good, that's a good metaphor. That's a good way to look at it. That's a great Very way nice. to look at it. Well, that is Ratchet and Clank's only contender slot right now. So I could be tempted. I could be tempted. Because <laughs> that's right. It is it is on Thomas's uh on Thomas's um runner up list. Um, we'll we'll circle back to it later. We'll circle back. It's right. a good pick though. I was uh, gonna okay, put it in the mind for sure. You wanna so, tell us the one at the bottom of your list? So I didn't realize that we were ranking our three. I no, didn't they're rank. not ranked. They're, they're not they're okay. not ranked. We're just going from bottom of the top of to the, of the Excel sheet if you're looking at it. But okay. can I request something from Thomas real quick? Okay. Can you start with your second one instead? Because that kind of ties into the conversation we're just having. Your second, your second pick, your middle pick. See, my second pick is not the one you're seeing. It's oh, a different. Okay. It's a different one. <laughs> it's the one that starts with right. M. Just, just go with any of the the games. So my, list. I'll go with my third one because I think because I was going to get to it. Met- Metroid Dread. Metroid yeah, Dread's okay. my third game. Um, I didn't think it was possible. Like when y'all say it's a weak year, I look at the list and I'm like, Metroid Dread shouldn't even be possible. This game was a an- Taylor. When was this game announced? Like when did we first hear about Metroid? Last Dread? year. No, no, no. no but like, year. it's been rumored for a it's while. It's been in development. Oh, it's yeah. on on internet forums. It's been rumored since like 2012. Right. I've heard about this game since I was <laughs> in high school. Like I never thought i would get a 3d it or 2.5d metroid game i never thought i'd get that we kind of got that with samus returns but eh, we don't gotta talk about that it's a good game (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it's okay but metroid dread to me it it couldn't have done anything better for me as far as what it was going for for what it was Just going it. for, because the thing is, I think where where you don't like it is you're comparing it to modern games that have learned from Metroid. But this is a modern game, though. This just came out this year. You walked right, right into his trap. You walked into his yep, trap. Yeah, no, no, no. and, and look, that's, and that's a fair criticism, and I don't hold you for it. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, with Metroid Dread, it's the perfect sequel to the original Metroid games. Like, I don't want Metroid to take from Hollow Knight. I don't want Metroid to take from Ori. Because then it's not Metroid anymore. Those games took from Metroid itself. Yeah, it does kind of suck. Yeah, I don't want it to be a revolving, okay, where Tomb Raider takes from Uncharted. Now Tomb Raider's going to, I'm sorry, Uncharted takes from Tomb Raider. Now Tomb Raider takes, I don't like that. Like, I don't like like those games for that reason. Because I'm like, it's... 
it's kind of like the influence the influencer is now the influence see if that makes sense mm -hmm. i'm glad this game feels like it took some modern things but for the most part it feels like a true successor to for me um metroid zero or i'm sorry um what's the one on game boy fusion uh, I'm sorry, fusion yeah. Metroid fusion it feels like the direct successor to that and i I just had a great time with it. Just from a gameplay perspective, it's the best feeling Metroid game. Just bar none. I don't think it's e even close from a just how Samus feels the control. I think they nailed it perfectly. Um, I just and the level design, like once you get the hang of it, and like I think Clam said it best, like because it was confusing at first for all of us. Once you get it and you understand how to clear each place. And or how the transports work, it's just to me an amazing experience. Now I could be persuaded to put it in the honorable mentions. Well, and this and this one, so that's my question is like, my question is, why does it? What makes it better to you than Ratchet and Clank? Because, because to me, it's a, it's almost a similar argument that you have that you have is that it's just like the pinnacle of or it's just a, a really great of what yeah it was. exactly exactly um, of previous iterations. For me, why I would put it, and I look, I'm fluid with it because I am debate. I have been just debating whether to put it at three or four. But for me, Ratchet and Clank felt like just more of the same, and the adjustments made were very slight. This that feels like a true generational leap between, and, it, and it's cheating because the last game we got in the series was Metroid Fusion, but mm -hmm. it feels like a true leap compared to I love both the original Ratchet and Clank for PS4 and I love Rift Apart. They don't feel that much different. Like the gap between those two is not that far to me. The gap in terms of just like the advancement between Metroid Fusion and this is just very vast to me. And that, that's why to me right now it's taking the nod. That Daddy Ben Daddy Ben, can I can I can I jump into this a little bit? I know I know it's Please on my do. list, but yeah. No, no, okay. uh, now's the time. Okay, perfect. Um, <clears throat> Metroid Dread to me is probably my game of the year, my number one nomination. It is fun. It is fun. Um, I would agree that it does feel like a, a nice successor to those original metroid games but on top of that i do think that it is something we haven't really seen in gaming in a while a challenging metroidvania that really harkens back to those arcade day games where this this was the first game i've played in a while that has made me go, has made me think about it outside of just play, sitting down and playing it. I, I've had those games before. I, I, Uncharted is one of those. Uncharted 4 was, was hugely, I just wanted, I kept thinking about it. And, and a, a lot of the Far Cries and a lot of Fallouts are, are games that do that too. But this was the first game that made me feel like I was accomplishing something. I, I feel like a lot of the um, level design in this game, uh, and, and Thomas, you, you referenced it a little bit is so exploratory it really makes it really makes you feel a part of the game it really makes you feel like you you are learning about this world um without without being overbearing without being without being heavy-handed like oh here's what you need to do next and yes they've got those the 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 robot ais in the middle of each level to to kind of guide you in the right direction um but worst that's part of the that's game. worst part of the game yeah, i would agree I would agree. The ads? Um, hmm? The robots. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, really? Oh, not not the not the robots. I mean the AI that 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 tells you like uh, in a British voice goals. like, "Oh, Samus, hey, you yeah. need to you, oh, you remember, like you need I to like, go here." Oh, Alex? Is that Alex? Is that? Yeah. Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like him. I, I like thought you were talking about the yeah. e, where's, where's the e the, Emmys? the Emmys. The Emmys. Yeah. Those are my least I hate those parts. I, hate I like those things because um, they 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 feel like a bit of a challenge. But after you get in like the flow of it, like the first time you battle one, you're like, 
I, whew, whew, you're desperate. You're 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 scrambling for life, and then then you kind of get it, and the rest of the game feels like the challenge. And then you get to these bosses, these these mini bosses, and you have to beat them, and you've already learned how to beat them, and you're kind of like, yeah, I got this. I'm a badass space mercenary. I got this. The game made me think about it outside of the game. And to me, that's a big part of what makes gaming fun is if, if it can follow you into the real world. And I know this isn't the same for everyone. I'm, I'm not going to try to uh, establish like this thought process to everyone who played it. But to me, it if I got stuck on a level, I could go sit down, read a book, watch TV, go to work and kind of like in the back of my head, ruminate on what I was doing in the game. It was an experience. It's it's a it's a great gaming experience that I haven't felt in in a fair while. Because a lot of games to me nowadays are very story driven, which is fine. I like story driven games, but when it comes to just a game, I, I don't think Metro is a story driven game. I know there's a stupid long lore that a lot of people care about, but who cares about all this nonsense space bird stuff? <laughs> At the end of the a day, you're people, playing apparently. the game to play the game. Yeah. <laughs> And it is, it, I, I know, Alfredo, some of your complaints earlier in the year were that the game was too forgiving uh, for your losses. I think that's fine. That's a modern way of playing. You can't get new players nowadays if you have that same sort of difficulty setting that old SNES and, and Genesis games had because they were just basing it off of arcade games, which were quarter play. You, you, if you lose, you lose. You can't do that anymore. And I think the way they've implemented in this game where there is a slight retraction in progress works really nicely. Um, I, it's, it's just a pure and simple game to me. It's, it's just the most gaming game I've played this year. Um, a throwback. It's a, it's a throwback, but it also does borrow from some more modern Metroidvanias which is nice because it makes playing the game a lot less horrible like the old Metroids game. I, I like the old Metroids and I don't, I'm not even, I'm not even super nostalgic about them because I didn't play them till much later. It's just, they have their play and same with Castlevania. I, they, they have their place in the legacy of gaming, but I'm not, I don't, I don't love them. This game was so, it was nice and forgiving in certain aspects, but it was also balls to the wall challenging. In other aspects and that makes me th feel like it's uh an important game a lot of games need to triple uh, a you need to have sony nintendo triple a studios putting out games that aren't story driven because that's what people want because they want games to replace movies you need people to replace games with games good games and this was a good game it wasn't a story it was just a game and and I had a lot a lot of fun with it. A lot of fun. Um, it's the first game I've beaten in a week, in a while. Because a lot of games, story driven games, you kind of get slogged down in the stories. And it, and even in platformers without games, you kind of get bored. You kind of get ah, I don't want to I don't want to progress anymore. Metro Dread, mm -hmm. you want to progress. You want to get to the end because you feel you genuinely feel like you're you're accomplishing uh, accomplishing something and i do think even though the maps are large and kind of overwhelming at first that's that's a great experience to have cuz in our modern world at least we don't have this sort of overbearing what am i going to do feeling cuz you can google it but if you play the game naturally it does have this overbearing appeal that isn't too overbearing it bearing it's it I think I'll sum it up nicely with this game feels well balanced in all regards. Every single reg regard of the game. Story, which isn't important, balanced. Gameplay, balanced. Level design, balanced. And and map uh, map design is balanced in a way that I think is fun and exciting. Um, and so it's my game of the year. Well said. It's interesting, you. this point that you make about... Um gamey games because i feel like this year is an opportunity for these gamier games to shine in years where uh as opposed to years where you know like last year where we had 
games like God of War, or not sorry, not God of War, Last of Us and Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, mm-hmm. extraordinarily story driven narrative games, right? Games. Yeah, and, and these were the shoe, you know, shoe-ins for Game of the Year, largely off of the strength of their narrative, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I will. Well, Last of Us, yes, but I would say I wouldn't say that for Ghost of Tsushima specifically because I feel like that is a game that had both, and I feel like Game of the Year should be it? games I'm, that do have both. I'm gonna say the meme. I'm gonna say the meme. Uh, this is the Dark Souls of Metroid games. <laughs> no, uh, no, it isn't. It, it really isn't. But um, when when I think of gamey games, I do think of the Dark Souls, uh, Bloodborne, Ghost of Tsushima games because they are hard. And they do make you feel accomplished when you do something without with, without nice. having to rely on narrative, without having to rely on reward systems. They just progressively make you feel like you're playing the game and learning and getting good, getting good at the game. And Metroid is a very smoothed out version of that. It's not super hard. It's not super easy. It's just when you get into the when you get into that gamer zone, when you get into the zone um you just play it and you play it at your own pace and it feels cool. It feels cool to play the game at your own pace. Meanwhile, Metro, uh, I mean like uh, dark souls or bloodborne, you kind of, you get into the zone and then you, you immediately hit one of those bosses that just throws you out of your zone and you got to reassess. And those games are great. Those games are great for that reason. But I like Metroid dread, just letting you play the game at your own pace and making you feel like you're just experiencing a game. Yeah, I, and I, I see a, a lot. Question. Oh, good, Ben. I, I'm I do just gonna say, I, I see a lot of gamey games on our list. Yeah, that's here, what, exactly what I was tenders. thinking too. Um, <laughs> they're well, the majority, I think, of the, the games on our lists are not narrative. Yeah, I, 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 I doubt you're counting Ratchet and Clank in that, but that's a game. Ratchet and Clank, the old games to me, felt gamey game, and throwing in kind of like these grand narratives, kind of feels. A little counterintuitive um to me that's a, a gretchen and clank's an example of a game that i felt like had a great gamey game feel in the 3d platforming space but kind of recently has started to go grand narrative with it which isn't a bad thing it's just i don't care i don't care i might if i if i really put my my time into it but i don't it, that's not what interests me about games those sort of games at least so, is now the time for rebuttals? Sure. Because I do have... Well, as you guys know, Metro Dread is not... Your favorite game. It's not one of my favorite games for this Alfredo year. Alfredo thinks it's worse than Duke Nukem Forever. <laughs> that is exactly... That. Those are quoted words. <laughs> I never even played that game, but I heard... Thinks it's that. the E.T. of our generation. <laughs> Look, what I definitely Elliot hear you, desert. Libs. I hear you <laughs> on all your points. But... The problem but with evil. I, yeah, I get it. <laughs> the problem that I have with this game is that Metroid Dread specifically, it's it feels so much like a game that is stuck in the past. I disagree with the sentiment that you can't make a game challenging because it won't sell as much because we have we have that now. We have dark, oh, yeah, yeah, dark yeah. franchise, all of that. I I just feel like this game while you said when you get in the groove and it becomes fun, I did, I definitely agree with that. Once I got in the groove of that, I was having a blast. Once I was getting my upgrades, once I was progressing, the problem is that this game felt like, it felt like I was fighting this game to, pro- to progress into it. It felt like I was fighting the game to play it because specifically the map design was non-intuitive was very old school they didn't learn from the games that have come nope. that i think they should borrow from nope. i know thomas was saying that nope. you sh- you know you want to keep it separate nope. <laughs> with uncharted and tim raider and all nope. that but i think that games should always reiterate on what is making games more modern what is making them more special and this game isn't doing that in certain aspects which makes it more frustrating than enjoyable specifically what i'm talking about is because the map for the map design it took me between nine or ten hours to finish this game i kid sure. you not five of those hours was me literally walking around trying to figure out where to go 
like five hours. Uh, right. I counted. And I wasn't using walkthroughs. I wasn't doing anything. I was fighting the map design. And it turns out that, oh, I was supposed to just shoot this, you know, random block, which isn't indicated in any way on the map. You, you sound like know. that. You sound Hold on, like b- that. Before, b- before you go, Clams, I, I wanted to say, just for the record, I, I stand behind out everything Alfredo says. I'm 100 percent on board with you. I, I, I do not like this game. <laughs> I, I do, I do like the game, but I'm fighting the game's map design to play it. Once I got in the groove after that, I, I was having fun when I was actually able to play the game. But that prevented me from progressing and playing the actual game. Yep, I See, quit playing. I, I didn't finish it like you did. I just quit. I was like, I, I don't have time for this. This is I mean, okay. I do have this other is not issues fun. like the Emmy specifically, which is supposed to be the big oh, like the big scary, the big the big promo. All the Emmys are on all the posters. This is called Metroid Dread, and they didn't induce that feeling after like the first time. I'm not scared of the Emmys. Like like you stated before, another critique is that I've been. I feel like this game is also unforgiving. It's not that hard. It gives you save points that are extremely forgiving when you come to a uh, Emmy. It's, you know, I don't feel scared because I know I'm just going to be set right outside. It's, it's, I, 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 I feel like a part of that I'm is sorry. your feeling. This is a question. Yeah. So are you, do you not like, like, cause I'm confused. Cause you say it's easy. But it's I, I don't think it's easy. <laughs> like I, I, I'm kind of getting just getting confused because because I, I, I get what you're saying because I have the same critic. That's my main criticism of it. Why I'm debating putting it in the honorable mentions because I did not like the map design 100. percent I I did look through walkthroughs for a couple things. Like I just you know I don't care. I was too you know stubborn to do that. Yeah, I, sometimes I am, yeah. but I, as I've gotten older, I'm just like fuck it. If I'm, as long as I like the gameplay, I don't care. But I mean, if I did do that, it, I'm sure I would like it more. Is it too? I'm, but what was easy about it, and what was challenging? Because that's where I'm getting kind of getting confused. Maybe I you said it was not word. challenging. I uh, the the better word would be it's not. It doesn't induce dread, as the name implies. It is not. It is too forgiving in that the Emmy example that I gave that you do not you don't get a challenge in that way in that oh my god if I get to this certain point and I have to face this Emmy I have to you know claw my way out of this situation no I just have to start right outside the room and try again until I succeed it just are you, doesn't are you jaded that. by life his life it's like his life brought you down I don't say I think we I think we need to get the guillotine <laughs> <laughs> no, okay okay hey, so, I, i'm with him I'm, I'm i'm letting alfredo talk for me because he's saying all my points but okay i'm totally on his on his on his side of the fence on this so i well, do lots, like the, there's lots to argue about yeah with metroid dread but and alfredo is wrong can we all agree that Metroid Dread was the most argued about game this year? <laughs> so we will have to see how things. I think Alfredo's out. on the fence. Yeah, <laughs> no, no possible additional votes. It's not on this list. Uh, okay, I, w- I want to take it to a game that I feel is somewhat inspired by Metroid that is on my list. Um, going from Nintendo to PlayStation here, if it's not Metroid inspired, it's certainly inspired by the things that inspired Metroid namely alien i'm talking of course about returnal house marks uh game that came out in august returnal's a weird one um i have gone back and forth with this game just in in my feelings with it because it is one of these games that is uh truly punishing it's it's not i wouldn't say that the game is is difficult because it's it is doable right but the consequences for failure are steep, much like Dark Souls, where I don't, I don't know that you can, you can, you know, we often think about Dark Souls in terms of its difficulty, but I don't think it's really the difficulty that, that does it. It's not that there's just a skill ceiling that you can't get over. It's, it's about how much you're willing to, to bear with the repetition of dying and retrying. Um, and the more I play Returnal, the more I feel like it's worth barreling through, 
right? The more that is exposed, the more that is um, revealed. Uh, I don't know how I would feel if the fundamentals of this game weren't as solid as they are. This game plays incredibly, incredibly well. The gameplay is just phenomenal. It's a perfect, in my mind, a perfect marriage between Housemarque's arcadey roots and the expectations of a modern AAA game with, you know, the third person over the shoulder ish camera. Um, it's, it, you know, that, that core shooting and dodging and jumping and zipping and, and just frantic, hectic bullet hell awesomeness in this, um, you know, third person, uh, uh, well, close third person view because all house marks games are, are third person. Um, it's different. I, I haven't played many games like this that don't have a fixed camera. Um, so, yeah, I, I am not finished with Returnal, and that's a theme for two of the games on my on my top three list. I, I only have four games on my list, and I haven't finished two of them. <laughs> um, Year of the Backlog. Yeah, right. Seriously. Uh, but, yeah, so I, I think I think Housemark has hit on something that is is just nobody else is doing i feel it's and it's um it's special it's it's unique it's interesting it's incredibly uh you know challenging in the sense that it's so punishing um but it's it's well worth chipping away at and i can't wait to see the end of it um it's on somebody else's list cool you got anything yes. to add there yeah um my game of the year when in 2013 was a uh, resogun and and that's I was so hyped for Returnal because of that because there it's you, you said it perfectly is a perfect marriage of, of of I forgot what what would you say exactly it was a perfect marriage of what how <laughs> the arcade roots with the with the you know modern sensibilities of a that's of a right third person action game beautiful the Duke of Design coming in clutch right there <laughs> um, yeah and I think so what makes it one of the reasons I like it so much is the weight like the weight of death in the game which is a lot of my favorite games are like that. Um, I, I used to play um, SOCOM US Navy SEALs and it was where, you know, it, there, there was no respawn. You die, you're out for the rest of the round. Um, Bloodborne, Dark Souls, all these games have, have weight to death. Whereas like these first person shooters is one of the reasons I, I didn't really like them. And like, kind of like how Alfredo was talking about, there's no consequence in Metroid Dread. You just die and respawn. Um, but Returnal has that weight to it. So every, every run felt unique and I'm a big fan of dead cells and Haiti. So it's like the, the rogue, the rogue runs, you know, um, I thought they did a great job. And I think that like the sound design in particular sticks out to me in that game, the graphics, the gameplay, the story, you know, it's, it's not like, I don't think it's a super great story, but it's different. It feels special. And, and, um, and it feels like it, it feels like it really stands out as a game of the year contender to me. Um, I don't really have anything else to add, but it, it's a really I, it may be my game of the year. I don't even know at this point, but looking at my list, it may be. So don't call me don't call me Scrooge. <laughs> oh, bring it on! <laughs> so Scrooge. I bought Returnal when it first came out. Um, I played. I'd like to say ten hours of it. I got to like the fourth biome. And while I appreciate this game, because just from a dual sense standpoint, this is probably the second best dual sense and 3D audio implementation besides Astro's Playroom. This mm -hmm. game, just from a control, it, your controller feels alive when you play this game. And I have to give it a lot of kudos for that. Part of me wishes they had just done a Dark Souls formula as opposed to the roguelike formula with this. I am not a fan of, and I progress far, but I didn't like how I progress. I didn't like the progression system in this game at all. And it made me think like, wow, like Dark Souls in a lot of ways is forgiving from a progression standpoint compared to this. Mm -hmm. Like, definitely. Cause I don't think you get like, not to spoil anything, but I don't think you get like a progression progression, like in terms of you can skip bosses until like the third, fourth, third boss, right? There's a few things so. that you get that stay with your character. Yeah, but you have to go through <laughs> bosses again and stuff. And yeah. I'm just, and I'm like, I wish it was more like Dark Souls. I feel like Dark Souls, like 
there is an even more sense of loss in this game than even Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. And that's something I didn't like. Because I'm like, I, I think Dark Souls and Bloodborne, they hit it perfectly. Like, you, like, if you're risky and you keep your souls on you and you die, that's mm -hmm. on you. You can try to go get them back, but, you know, it is what it is. Like, I like that kind of risk reward. This, to me, like, it's too many times where you can unfairly die. And if well, you aren't yeah, progressed enough, you it, you feel like I, I can honestly lost. I can honestly say there's no game that makes me feel shittier about dying than <laughs> Returnal. That's fair. And yeah. that was something that just turned me off. Where it was like I probably would have picked this up if it's like $40, 50 dollars. This is a seventy dollar game. Mm -hmm. And so for me to put the amount of time in, and I got pretty far, but it was a lot to get there. I felt like I put a lot in. I have to respect the game. That's yeah. why I won't challenge nobody for it's it's not a situation where like I, I understand why it might be your game of the year, Cole. And I understand, Ben, why you have it ranked so high. I just personally it'd be it's in my top ten. It's yeah. in my top ten, but I can't and, put it in the top five. I will say on that, Thomas, that I think that was their weak point was I think the runs are a little too they're too lengthy. If they could have also nailed sorry, that. Not, and not to Go cut ahead. you off, sorry, I, I forgot to mention. Also, when I played it, they didn't have the save thing. Yep. So yeah, I have to yeah. keep this thing on my PS5, and I can't switch to any other games or else I'm going to lose a run. And I'm these runs are would, not... I'm wondering if that would change you know, our opinions about the game now for the better. I'm it. sure it would. Yeah, I probably would have beat it if they had that at launch. Probably. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's unfortunate I played the game, and I'm, I probably will go back to it at some point. But, yeah, that was a big thing. Sorry to cut you off. No, I think those are the the two things that hold it back from being really, really great. Is like when you think about uh, Hades or Dead Cells, your runs are typically average run is probably twelve to fifteen twenty minutes, and the runs here are so long that it is very demoralizing when you die. And I feel like there is is a little bit of a lack. There could be more of a pro progression between between runs, like more more carryover stats or something that kind of you know Side entices paper. you. You're excited because like Hades, when you die or Dead Cells, you're you're really excited. When you die, you're like, okay, I'm going back. You get, you get your upgrades. Yeah, you get, you get to redo I never everything. I felt bad about dying in Hades. Like I know Hades. Like when you die, it's like all right, bet I get to talk to all the people. You know, what I'm saying? like it was, it was like my and honestly, fault. right? And honestly, I, it was never a situation where no, like oh dead. that's unfair. Yeah, you know, I always understood in this game. There's that's so what I'm saying. Times. That that There's held so it back times. for me. If they could have recreated that feeling where every time when you're respawning back and you're starting getting out of the spaceship, if you're like pumped to start another run, but yet I do feel like there was a little bit of um depress like depression depression would sit in and you'd be like, Oh shit, here we go. God dang this, <laughs> like this game so, should have been called Metroid Dread. I uh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Returnal Dread. Um so I definitely hear your criticisms. Thomas, I think I think there is something to the fact that the runs here are too long and then it, it's too much of a blow to lose all of that progress. I think it contributes to this persistent feeling in the game that you are, and much like Dark Souls, that you are in a hostile world that wants you dead. Right. And that doesn't that doesn't want you here, right? So the adventure is overcoming that incredible obstacle. And um I think, you know, to give the the devil its due, you're the devil here, Thomas, uh, <laughs> or Scrooge, like you said. Um, I think this is a first stab at something that that could be incredible. Great. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I agree. Oh, I'm agree. with you 100% on that, Ben. 100%. I, I'm in for a Returnal 2. They're the first like, ones in, that I'm have, they're the first people that have actually taken this rogue and put it into a AAA package mm -hmm. experience with incredible gameplay it could be extremely special extremely and well, not, they there, not the first but we're not the first we'll get to it not the only I, one I, I don't think we will get a returnal too just because i think i think the difficulty of the the climb here for many was too much um so they stayed stayed away from the game we'll probably uh, get like a spiritual successor of sorts maybe it's not as hard but yeah we, that's all, that's the best we can hope for i think um but what I, what I see in Returnal is uh, a diamond in the rough and something that is really, um, for all of its faults, pushing boundaries and, and doing interesting new things and stumbling on the way, but not playing it safe. This game doesn't play it safe. Mm -hmm. And oh, I yeah. have to commend it for that. 
that that's why it's on my list to 100 percent yeah it, it takes its concept and it runs with it and it trips and it stumbles but then it gets back up and it keeps running much like the loop of the game uh but anyway <laughs> True. Uh, <laughs> I just, I just want to pitch in because I I also really love Returnal. Um, and I don't know. I did I did really enjoy the step on me, mommy type nature of it, where it's completely unforgiving. And I really love those types of games, so I was all here for it. Um, I think where incredible gameplay, everything you guys said. The only place where I wish they brought a little bit more of was the story. I think that it was a little bit too experimental, the story that, or the narrative that they tried to pull together in this story, in this game. I, where this game shines, of course, is the arcade nature. There are arcade routes where the gameplay and the, uh, you know, the actual shooting, it feels amazing. Um, and I think they should have stayed more along lines with that and, st- and didn't try to shoehorn this pseudo story into it because i felt when those elements did come into play i was hoping it would be more of a pt like experience because that's kind of what it seemed like it was trying to resemble those first person moments um and it didn't it just didn't really do anything for me i loved whenever i was in the action though so great game alfredo i was i was upset with you but you 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 reeled me back in by referring to it as step on me mommy gameplay. So I think <laughs> Hey, I still got love for you. It's just that game, you know. <laughs> grinds my gears sometimes. Oh man, oh man. Um, well, unlike Metroid Dread, I don't think Returnal is gonna ruin any relationships, though it may ruin <laughs> a few controllers. It may have already. Uh okay, let's move on. Um let's go to you, Alfredo. I think you're the only person who has not um presented a nominee sure uh yeah so my first nominee not in any particular order is kina bridge of spirits which probably doesn't surprise a lot of you guys since you know the type of types of games that i enjoy to play uh i think that this game is a gem for lack of any other words really i think that this game it obviously shines in its art department but i it was incredibly impressed at how this is a debut indie game that's kind of backed by playstation but more for marketing reasons um and i think that they knocked it out of the park now the a lot of people will complain about this game for specifically for the controls of it it doesn't really feel like a modern game it's it the controls aren't super tight it and surprisingly, it feels more like a Dark Souls game, um, in that in its combat, which I really like Dark Souls, so I appreciated it. I, I just see a lot of potential for this game and what the studio can do in the future, and I'm really really excited for what they can do. Also, really enjoyed the story aspect nature where they did kind of like a culmination of three different stories with an overarching story. I thought that was a really nice way to. Uh, kind of wrap this first game all in one in a nice neat package so yeah fair enough i love i loved it too um i it's not it makes top 10 but not enough for it to be a top five game for me i mean it's fair the definite the game definitely has its fair share of criticisms it's definitely not a perfect game but i definitely think for me it earns a top three spot um, in be solely due to its potential and its wow factor, it it just surprised me on so, so many different levels, um, and it seemed like something that was completely new. Even though you know we do get action adventure games of this sort, but it surprised me in a way that Ratchet and Clank didn't, because you know Ratchet and Clank reiterated on formula formula that they had already set precedent for in their previous games and this game you know i didn't know what to expect story-wise or really ca- anything character-wise and yeah it it passed surpassed all my expectations awesome well i think kino was one of the most uh hotly anticipated games of this year um i still obviously have not played it but um and, I, you know, frankly, I don't know that I will. And this will be my first <laughs> I mean, I, I don't I, want to pay lip like service never. Here. Obviously, <laughs> I think you should. But I do. I def- do you like Dark Souls games? 
Yeah, you I do, do, right? I do. Yeah. I think you should play this game. It's like a good mix of Dark Souls and Zelda. Like it, yeah. It, it's a really good mix of those two things. Very, very great comparison. Right. I don't even like Zelda like that. So fair. I'll, I'll keep gonna, that in mind. I'll, I'll keep it. Don't in look mind. at my hat. Uh, Kina has only one vote from Alfredo, so um, it stands no chance of winning. Sorry, Kina. So sad. <laughs> you are uh, the weakest link. You are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, who's next? Cole. Back to you. Back to me. Okay. Um, so my last game. This is my personal game of the year. It's Resident Evil 4 VR. Wait, question. Wait, how are you in your last game? Well, because we already talked about Ratchet and Clank and Return. Oh, okay. Um, Well, if you have anything to add on Ratchet, I don't know if you you already No, you know, honestly, uh, no, as as of right now, my... I guess I don't want to give it away, but I don't have anything to add. I think Thomas said it best is like he... When he talked about the gap between Metroid Dread and and how far it's come compared to Ratchet, I, I didn't. I'd laid the sword down with that. I thought he did a good job uh, defending Metroid Dread. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna push back on him dropping Metroid Dread to put Ratchet up. Um, I don't. I don't think I can win on that one. So I just digress. Um, so yeah, Resident Evil Four VR. Um, this is no one else's. So this will just be quick. Uh, I never played the original uh, Resident Evil Four. Uh, come to find out it's one of the best Resident Evil Resident Evil games. Um, and debatable. Well, I mean, you know, I, I just did some, you know, light yeah, Googling it's on Resident widely Evil. Recognized yeah. The best, yeah. Uh, but VR wise, which I have played a lot of VR and this is one of the top three, I'd say two or three experiences I've had in VR. It was awesome. And the story is good. Um, this really makes me want to play all these other PlayStation One, PlayStation Two games in VR. It was it was just done really well. I mean, there's nothing. I, I talked about it in a past podcast. Um, the the gunplay, the loading and reloading, the inventory system, everything was just incredible. Um, nothing else to say. It was just great. Um, it's not in our game of the of the year topic, but it was my personal game of the year. So I'll leave it at that. I definitely want to play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw if my VR unit was work working, I'd be playing it too. Yeah, it's, it's a must play. It's a must play in VR. Excellent. Thomas? I'm so sad this isn't anybody else's anything. My game of the year, because I'll save the other one for, because obviously that's going to be a controversial. We're going to have to argue about things. But the one that I'm going to be quick on is Halo infinite i don't even want to know how many hours i put into this game like in totality i do not want to know because i've been playing this game since i like to say i like this i was playing it in the beta in like maybe september or august and i knew then i'm like okay this is probably going to be my most played game of the year i've put in so many hours of multiplayer formed a squad with people this is a return to form for Halo as a franchise. And I think when Halo is doing well, gaming is better as a whole. Because Halo is one of those franchises. I like it's, that sentiment a lot. That's mm-hmm. so It's the same thing I said before. I was the sentiment about Nintendo. We all wanted Nintendo to be a competitive when they weren't yeah. with, with the Wii U. And then they came in with the Switch and gaming's better for it. Same right. thing with Halo. Same thing. Very true. Right. I think that Halo hasn't had a home run since Halo Reach. Halo Reach is probably the last game that I because I I I really wasn't a Halo fan before just because I never had Xbox. And so just the build up for me playing the older Halo games, doing co-op with my friends this past year, and then like it all accumulates into this experience with to me my favorite multiplayer <laughs> I've ever played in any game i love this multiplayer and then the campaign it's not the last of us you know what i'm saying it's not uncharted it's not that but it's not trying to be that it is just an open world like i said in a previous podcast if you like far cry if you like an open world shooter with great traversal try this game out it's it's free on game pass the multiplayer is free to play on PC and Xbox. If you want to have a good time, try out Halo Infinite. 
I feel like I, I let you I, down. I, 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 I wanted to play this game, and it probably would have been in my top five, but I just didn't. Play yeah. the campaign, y'all. Just play the campaign. I, like, I will critique you a little bit about that open world because if we're if we're gonna have if we're gonna go tit for tat about Metroid Dread constraining you to figure stuff out, from what I've seen and from what my my friends have played, Halo constrains you in certain aspects. Not a not lot. But not at all. I never it's, got it's, lost. It's, never it got feels lost. from what I've seen, and you you you've even said it yourself. Far Cry, it has the the copy paste level design from Far Cry. Not saying that's a bad thing. Not saying that's a bad thing. But if we're, I'm just, I'm bringing it up because Alfredo's okay. wrong. <laughs> Let Look, it go. I, I don't think, I don't think that that's an unfair criticism per se. The difference between this and Far Cry is when you are encountering stuff in Far Cry, you have Far Cry encounters. I will You're also, having I will, Halo encounters with this. So yeah, it, I agree. It, I will also literally say, feel every time you go. I'm sorry, not to cut you off, but every time no. when you're in an open world, like we open world, it's like you're going through a Halo level. No, like yeah, back but, and forth and back and forth. It's to me that is, I don't want to say revolutionary, but it's definitely a something that we have experienced in a Halo game. Before. What I was, what I was going to say is, I, I agree with you strongly on the fact that tra- traversal is so strong in Halo. Uh, from everything I've seen with people who I know who own who have played it in front of me, it is I think some of the most next gen traversal experiences in the same vein as Breath of the Wild. Like they have taken moving in a big map to a new fun extreme, and I think that definitely de- deserves its place at the top of the list for sure. Like I haven't played it, but from everything I've seen, like I if I had played it, it would definitely be on my list. Well said. Like that's the it has the best. Yeah, it has the best physics it. since like a Mario game. Like th- that's like Mario to me is probably the best physics. Like in terms of moving the character around. This how Master Chief feels in this game to me is a close second. It's just everything is just perfect. It's fine tuned. That's all I'll say. Since it's the only one on, I'm the only person that put it on the list. Excellent. You know, it's interesting. I, this was a very strong year for Xbox <sighs> compared to compared to yeah. recent years. Um, maybe it speaks to our bias that we still call this a weak year, or maybe that just speaks to how much ground Xbox still needs to cover in order to be, you know, outputting the kind of games that that typically run the game of the year lists that Sony and Nintendo put out. Um, but it's just, you know, interesting to note. Yeah, Moving and they on. only had two games this year. That's the funny part. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's um, a strong. That's games. a strong year for Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two great games. Great. Um, clamps. All right. Speaking of traversal, and speaking of Mario, we're going to bring up Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury because I will combine them both. Because you you guys did make a good argument for it's what you're buying. It's what you're buying. So they both count. Um, and I will say Mario 3D World is a fun game. It is a fun game. I wouldn't say it's a good game or a groundbreaking game or anything special. It is fun. It is just a fun game. But that's how it can be said for a lot of Mario 2D side-scrollers, which is what Mario 3D World, ironically, is. It is just... It's Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, and 3, but in 3D. It's it's nothing special. And, and we, we all know, we all experienced it in the Wii and the Wii U series of games that they just put this game out over and over again they put out mario 3d world over and over again and it felt stale i have it felt never so... played any of those games i'm ashamed to say well mario you, you, the 3d world you, games you don't need to they're they're so stale and i think they're the weakest mario games out there the 3d mario games are always the weakest games out there mario 3d world is a lot more fun it adds a lot of fun mechanics it adds a lot of fun challenge but bowser's fury to me, makes all of those Mario 3D World qualms go away. Because one of my issues I have with 3D platformers is that they kind of feel a little slow. They feel like, oh, there's a thing over there. I've got to walk all the way over there and do it. i got to do that thing over there. I see it. Banjo-Kazooie, uh, Mario Sunshine, uh, Mario 64. They all kind of feel too big and wide with their 3D World. Odyssey, Odyssey fixed that. Odyssey was a, a, a too good of a game to describe right now. Mario Odyssey. Is, 
Say again. Ten out of ten. Don't ten out of ten game. It's a. It's such a fun game. Everything it throws at you is so smooth and fast paced, and you're just you're loving every minute of it. Bowser's Fury makes all of those cool, challenging game level designs from 2D Mario games, including 3D World, and brings them into a 3D open world space. They forget one thing, though. Mm. The triple jump. They did forget the triple jump. but <laughs> that, It's but, sorely missing. But you can do a weird backflip side jump. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So that's that. kind of cool. Um, they did take out the triple jump because I think that would make moving around the level a little bit, a little bit too easy. I would say if you mm. if you could triple jump, it would make moving around each of these islands a little bit too easy. What Bowser's Fury is, is, is really just a demo. It is a demo for future Mario projects. And I think it's so, so clear cut in the right direction. Mario needs to go 3D fully. They can't keep, I mean, they can put out a 2D platform every once in a while, but they need to go 3D because they nailed 3d platforming with this this game because it's it, it's so the map is is small but it is vast when it comes to taking on each little level challenge because in the same way toad's treasure tracker was kind of a cute little puzzle 3d game every little level was small but it had a lot of oomph to it. it had a lot of oomph to how you you played it and how to solve the puzzle bowser's fury i feel does the same thing while also keeping all of those 2d platformer mario challenging level designs that are just throwing stuff at you just like idea 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 i love how many ideas this demo throws at you um it's a lot of fun i i, I it, it is mario so i will say a, Mario is the best game franchise ever, and B, Mario is the stupidest game franchise ever. <laughs> so I would go either way with this game. If anyone wanted to argue it one way or the other, I'm all ears. But for me, <laughs> you drink his hot sauce, Tom? I'm coming with I'm the like, heat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the worst 3D Mario game ever made. Oh, no. What the rebuttal. <laughs> I enjoy... Every single 3D Mario game more than Bowser's Fury. I'm sorry. But Bowser's Fury. The game Fury that isn't... it comes with is leagues better than itself. It's uh, the, It feels way worse than any other. But you know the only one that feels worse? The one on 3DS. That's the only one that I can say feels worse. <laughs> sure, that one, that one was a but, port. That was a yeah, shitty port. Yeah. yeah. But Galaxy, Sunshine, 64, Odyssey, you name it. Like, they're all just leagues better. And oh to me, God. just I'm the blocking direction. you on Discord right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't block me earlier. <laughs> no, I love you, Al. You, you look at Alfredo. I made fun of Mario. Huh? <laughs> but no, like, I just, like, for me, when I saw what this is, I was excited. And when I played it, I started off liking it and then slowly realized this is a tech demo. It, it is, feels it is. soulless. Like it, it, it's it, the only Mario game that feels like it has no soul. It, like, it feels that, that kind of troubled me where I'm like, I don't want it to go this direction. I know they're going to add peach and I know they'll add, they'll add the little stupid story. I, I know that, but just from the open world standpoint and there are these timed events where bowser just randomly just go i'm like i don't yeah. like this at no. all and then mario turns into a what is what was it and short and a shield? lion a lion no Wait, but what was, what's in short and shield where the giga pokemon like uh gigantamax uh, yeah the, mario turns into a gigantamax pokemon i'm like what is going on here okay like, what are we so, doing like we turn this into dream. dragon ball z as well like, I'm not. I'm okay. 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 That, I just had a problem with the whole <laughs> yeah. project. I'm okay. sorry. All right. Look, I want. I want to back Taylor up. I think okay. this. <laughs> I think it deserves to be in the game of the I year. Told you I'm going to be sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, look, I back him up because of the whole package, not particularly Bowser's Fury. And I do think Bowser's Fury is. A, it was a good game, and on its own, honestly, it's one of the top top five games I've played this year. Just Bowser's Fury, but. It's not the direction that I don't think it's the direction Mario needs to go, which I feel like this is a whole nother topic that we could go off on with the direction Mario could go. But yeah. like Bowser's Fury, 
Mario works with the different biomes and the kingdoms and the and the little mini open worlds. But no, no, <laughs> no, 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 menus, no, no, no. I, I will menu, say I do like I know it. You're with me, but menus in video games are bad. They are. You can't stop all of the gameplay to go walk five minutes to the next level and then enter that level. That is bad. It's well, how do you so change biomes dumb. then? You know, could, like in Mario, what do you? How do you? How do you change from a snow world to a desert a world to portal, a lava know. castle? I, I wish. Us. I wish 3D Mario games were just seamless. You went from one to the next, like Bowser's Fury indicates they are willing to go in that direction in the future. I don't like how you have to go to that hub world in Odyssey. It's the worst part. You have to you have to sit there on the, the boat with the hat, and you're like, whoop, 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 whoop. "It's me, I'm Mario. I love I'm a hat. I you don't like little, that. You see the little um, the hat flying in the air. You don't like, who doesn't like that? <laughs> Do you hate that? I don't hate that, but I think I think that that he gives is you the so, tips. You know. You want to go through a Mario level fast. So the argument I want to make to both you, Thomas, who disagrees with me and is wrong, and to you, I'm sorry, to you, Cole, who is right in agreeing with me, um, I want to make the argument that what Bowser's Fury does for the games is it, it takes the 2D elements of level design, that the 2D elements of level design and slaps them in the 3D space. Well, and it gives you this open world to explore them in. And I think that is fun. I think that's but I think that's a creative way of taking what? Oh, so I was gonna say, so I think Mario 3D World does that better than the open world because it's little confined air er, little confined oh, worlds takes the two D oh. takes the two D uh you know, the two D platforming and puts it into that little four minute three D world. As opposed get, to the open I'll, I'll world, this. Just Thomas, little... you're agreeing with the wrong things, but uh, disagreeing with the right Look, things. I'll, I'll end it on this, <laughs> Taylor. I will say I would move it up. I would move it up to the game of the year discussion, but I don't think we have a shot at winning that. I mean, no, I wouldn't no, even no, argue no, I, that I for agree, game of the year, so I, I don't think it's worth moving up. I get um, you, but I'm but done. I did like it, and it's in my conversation. It it deserves. It had its time to shine. So I, I said should buy this game? Question mark. <laughs> no, yeah. Did I buy my sure. heat up for the camera? No, I didn't. Don't buy this game. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's worth playing. It's absolutely worth. If you're a Mario and Nintendo fan, I think it's worth playing. Okay, Just yeah, play one of the older it. Mario games. Just I'm play Sunshine. It's better than Sunshine. It's better than Sunshine. It's not better than Sunshine. I'm going to agree with that one. Oh, man. <laughs> we, that's a, that's a day nod. for another day. Bowser Fury gets the nod, but it does not win the prize. Alfredo, yes, you and I, you and I have something to discuss here. Oh, do we? And it's it's the best Nintendo game that came out this year. Mm. <laughs> a little game called It Takes Two. Oh, I was now, like, the what? Reason, I don't. The like reason Nintendo I call this like the that. best Nintendo game that came out this year is because this is Nintendo design through mm. and through. In fact, this is this is Mario design through and through. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you, absolutely. Ta- you take a little new mechanic, you run it through the ringer for a level or two, and then you toss it away. And you get a new one the next level. It takes time to make it incredible. I, I I have not finished this game. It's the other game on my list that I have not finished, but incredible variety in this game. What mm-hmm. do you think, Alfredo? I completely agree. Um, this it takes you is my game of the year. Uh, it was a close race, but this game, I I I talked about how special it felt to me when I first played this game. I talked about how it took me back to when I first discovered Toy Story on my PS1, how it felt like you were just this little toy in a huge playground, in a huge sandbox. But not only does it do that, but it feels like everything in this game is so innovative. Like you're saying, Ben, everything, all of the gimmicky and mechanics that it throws you in, every single situation, all the different levels that it throws you in, it'll give you specific tools and expect you to use it in various ways, in very different ways, in gimmicky ways, you might say. But the key thing that this game does that it's so special is that you feel like it's not you never dwell on one specific thing too much you you might be doing something for 20 ish minutes let's say like a specific level and then it passes on to the next thing you're on to the next gimmick per se it it never wears out its welcome exactly gimmicks come and then and then they go Mm -hmm. and they're it's like always just the perfect amount of time where you're, they're like, 
about to get annoying, but they don't right. quite clear. And then the it hill moves on. Annoying. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. And I love the game for it. The only place where I could critique this game and say, okay, you guys got to improve on this is probably the story. The story isn't the best, especially when it tries to, you know, uh, tie it into the overarching story. Mm-hmm. The story is the best when it focuses on the couple itself, the two main protagonists that you're playing as. Um, that's when it's best, the bickering and how you have to work together to solve things and how yeah. that ties specifically into the actual gameplay of you really, really having to communicate with your partner or who, your co-op partner and saying, okay, you need to do this and then I can do this. And you guys just figuring out, oh, I can do this. You have these like little light bulb moments. Oh, we can combine these two different gimmicks and create a, a, a new thing. Like the game constantly surprised me every single turn. It, I was always, I was always like, wow, like this is really cool. Wow, this is amazing. Wow, this is innovative. The way that they're, the way that they're trying to make this very, very unique co-op experience that I can definitely say I have never experienced before. Yeah. It's just, uh, it floored me. This this may be obvious, but I don't know. Um, so it takes two. It, it's about, isn't it about a couple that's like on the brink of divorce? Yeah. And the, the whole yeah. commentary is it takes it takes two, you know, to make a thing but go to, right. To, like to make song. a thing go right. <laughs> right. That's right. That's, you know, that's, and, that's the only reason why, because that's, that's the first trailer, and that immediately hooked me. I was like, And what's that cool is that the, the story is married to the gameplay. Like, mm-hmm. married, another term. For, hey. but, yeah. Hey. Wordplay. <laughs> but, like, it really, I didn't play this game, and I really hate it, and I didn't, it's because I had no one to play it with. You hate but, it? <laughs> no, he hates that he didn't play. I hate that oh. I didn't play it. <laughs> no, but I think that if I had have played this with someone, and playing with someone else makes a game inherently more special. I think when you, if you can play any game in multiplayer, um, to me this this game seems really special. Like this game seems like this could be our game of the year. I would definitely agree with everything you just said, Cole, and everything that both you all said as well, because. It's not my game of the year, but I had a really fun time playing this game. I would say the weakest aspect for me was the actual mechanics, and it made me wish, and this is an accomplishment to the game, mind you, but I wish Nintendo actually made this game because Hmm. I feel like the controls and the physics just weren't as tight as they needed to be Uh, as compared, compared to where, you know, polish the even something like bowser's fury i was just raging on there's a <laughs> polish to that game's mechanics that i just don't think that this game has just from a movement standpoint i i think the mechanics are passable they are fine they are good for this game That's how you know, two, you're, you're playing as two players um the, the weak the weak link for me is the story actually i i i think me it's too. so stupid i think it's hallmark channel level of like <laughs> drama and soap it's like <laughs> that's oh. very true I didn't like I, the message I, of it either. I, w- I would definitely say the message of it. I'm like, that's not. I don't mm. think it had a message, though. I, I it was the message. Kinda tried, it was the it message. kind of tried to. And I was to. like, eh, that's real generic. Like, no, that's I mean, super I, okay. generic. Just, me and my girlfriend played this a little bit. And like the 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 female character was like such a such a bitch. And the and the and the male character was the was the dumbest idiot who ever <laughs> lived on the face of the planet. Attack. Archetypes. Like, they, but they're like so overwhelmingly those archetypes. They are, they are Marge and Homer Simpson to yes. like the furthest extreme you could yeah, go. Don't say that. For me, oh, that lent it to its charm, though, because <laughs> I, I felt like the game was aware of what it was. It's not trying to be this triple A experience because it's actually it's not a triple A experience. This is a double A experience. Actually, this isn't something published by Sony, Nintendo, Xbox. This is well, like EA. a part of EA Play, like EA Originals. Like this is technically not an indie game. It's it's published by EA, but it's not a triple A game. So you're not going to get that triple A level of polish. But you see what there's so there's just so much love and care for this game specifically and i feel like everything that they did they just mashed it so well for so little 
budget and you know they didn't have all of the big things behind it but it still felt like such a unique and special experience and i think because of that i, I can honestly say i've never wait i've never had anything like this game, wait game you're, you're saying this was an ea release yeah yeah it is. so it's you're in the game you're in the game <laughs> indeed oh my god i didn't know that yeah changes changes everything right yeah in the game right. It's a jack of all trades, master and none affair for me. Where it's it's yeah. a it's a very solid experience, but yeah, it's not world renowning. It's not iconic. It's not like like if it's game of the year for us, I'm fine with that. It, but it's to me like that's just showing that proving the point that it was a remarkable year, which I don't agree with. But I this game for it to win game of the year kind of highlights that there was no definitive yeah. gangbuster game this year i i like i like the phrasing you used it's it's um to me to me like if you do you remember when the when that fish fucking movie won the oscars it was like yeah, it was a lady in the water or something oh the shape shape, water. Shape of water. Yeah, i like that movie don't call it that it's a fine movie but oh, everything man. about it is shape annoying and stupid it is it is an effective well-made perfectly scripted movie it's just like god damn i hate that movie you know that's sort of what this you know know, to me the characters in that movie are stupid and i hate the fact that she sleeps with the fish and it's stupid and it's dumb it's it's an effective movie (laughs) it does the thing don't they don't they flood the don't they flood the room (laughs) i've never seen the movie it's a dumb Uh, movie back to back to it takes two um I get what you're saying, Thomas, about it being jack of all trades, master of none. I'm going to give this game the same praise that I gave Returnal in that it's doing something different that the competition is not doing. It's carving out a new space. It's carving out a new type of game. It's doing it with excellence. It stumbles in some ways. I think, namely, I, I take the criticism about the story. Like, I, I totally agree that the, these characters are broadly drawn. They're silly, most of all. They're silly, mm-hmm. which which is why I excuse it, because it's... it it seems to be like the whole thing is just is just lighthearted and and it's not you know it it cuts deep in some ways but it's not meant to be um it's not meant to be you know shakespeare Mm -hmm. yeah can can we all agree though can we all agree that the one thing this game does better than anything else and that needs to be in every game and is the reason it probably deserves its place at the game of the year awards a number one game of all time Couch co-op. Yes. Couch co-op. Exactly. Exactly. Give us couch co-op. Please. Halo didn't even get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the game. That's, that's that's the couch co-op game. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I and there that's there are others point. that are, you know, that are kind of recognizing the lack of, of couch co-op and trying to capitalize on that. I think overcooked is another where it's like you guys just you knocked it out of the park with with a good couch co-op experience and which is an underserved market, I think. Um, for sure, but there's nothing else like it takes two and before it a way out, mm-hmm. um, which I think was, you know, much less experimental in terms of game mechanics, but I think um, maybe even more gutsy because it did try to take itself more seriously. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. But it was a good game. It, but this is was, leaps yeah. and bounds. Yes, yes. It takes two strikes a much better overall tenor. I think it's got it's got tons of uh of interesting you know not gameplay depth but gameplay breadth across its runtime um it's got interesting locales it's got pretty dang good art considering this is not you know a triple a game and uh it's got a story that even though it is silly and doesn't all not always effective with um somewhat thin characters it it, I'm impressed with it because it takes its time. I, halfway through this game, I thought the game was going to be over. Mm-hmm. Same. And they, and they had hardly grown, and they had hardly come closer. And I was like, okay, here's the time for this this thing to land with a big wet thud. When they they somehow reconcile, and it's and it's like, where the hell did that come from? But no, I realized, you know, like I still got I still got a whole, you know, whatever is four to eight hours left of game here that I got to play. So uh, that that's something that I really appreciate the story about the story that it's willing to pace out this reconciliation or you know I haven't beaten it so 
who knows what's going to happen? Do they go <laughs> back together or not? Uh, they, they pace out this growth um, over a good long chunk of time, and they have the gameplay variety to back that time up. All fair well points. Said. Cool. Well, I don't think it, it takes two can be our game of the year, right? Because it's only got two votes unless things we we rejigger some things. I mean, everything has well, two votes, right? Yeah. So it's going to come much. down to a, a discussion between the best. So the one. only thing, the only thing that has the possibility, this is interesting. The only thing that has the possibility of three votes is Deathloop. Thomas, you're the only one with it on your actual list. Do you want to take away the conversation? Yeah. Okay, so Deathloop, like you, Taylor, saying that Metroid Dread was one of your first, like one of the first games, not first game, but one of the first games in a while that you got through in a week. I got through Deathloop in like four days. I was addicted. This is all I played. I'm not a Arcane fan. I've tried Prey. I tried Dishonored. Not that I hate those games. I don't hate, I respect those games, but they just didn't speak to me. But when you combine a James Bond, like like old school Sean Connery, James Bond style with, to me, one of the best protagonists in a video game, as far as I can, like, maybe, I, I can't think of the last time where a protagonist entertain me throughout the entire experience where not a line of dialogue was wasted where the antagonist is talking to me literally every time I start a level and they're having a back and forth affair that to me I'm listening to I'm not tuning out at all and that's before I even start the mission and it's not an open world game it's not a big world to begin with but it's a kind of an open level game where you can kind of figure out what you want to do. What do you want to accomplish on this run? It to me is the perfection of triple a roguelike. It's what I wanted Returnal to be. If it's going to be a roguelike, I don't think a roguelike fits 100% into a 3d anything. I think roguelikes are better served being something like Hades where it's like isometrical or like dead cells where it's, you know, just flat. I think it works better in that setting. If you're going to do a roguelike game, it needs to have something different. I think Deathloop captures that because it's not a roguelike, but it has enough of those elements mixed with, to me, a good story until you get to the end where the end is very divisive. I know, Alfredo, you didn't like the end, but, you know, I I under, I got it. It wasn't, like, world-beating, but it was fine. I enjoyed the journey as opposed to the destination. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that it it was different enough, and there's not ever going to be a game like Deathloop. I don't think any game can really kind of take this as a inspiration, per se. It's, it's so unique and so different that I... If Halo didn't come out, this would be my game of the year. For sure. I just, it, I don't think those experience like this. Um, also, multiplayer, it has a very, it has one of the most creative uses of multiplayer I've seen in the game as well. So I give it high marks. I, I get your criticisms of it per se. And I definitely respect Ben's a lot because Ben comes from playing those arcane games and he has direct criticism comparing it to those other games. So I definitely respect that. But for somebody who didn't really play those games, this game gave me everything I wanted. Yeah, let me let me dig into my criticisms a little bit more here because I didn't address them when I first brought it up. Um, they are there's a plethora of them. For one, the story I feel like it, it just it did not come together in the end in in a strange way because I finished the story and I was like, okay, what what was the the whole, this whole thing? Th- this was a game that that would sink or swim on its background story detail much the same way that bioshock does or many many immersive sims do Mm -hmm. where Mm -hmm. it's about the setting and the characters in that setting there there is a main character and you know there is a secondary main character um and their story is important but their story is intrinsically tied to the place right so the place is is the ultimate driver of the of the story um 
And I was reading all the notes as I got them. I wasn't going out of my way to find little story tidbits, but I found plenty of them. I had no cohesive understanding of what the hell happened mm -hmm. here. What was the point? What was I after? Sure, these characters have this interesting like con connection with one another, but how did this happen? Like mm -hmm. none of that came together. The dominoes did not fall in in a proper sequence, right? They're Sorry. there in lore. Like they're there. Like if you, if you look for like some of the stuff <clears throat> in the game, they're there. But I yeah. agree with you. You shouldn't have to do that. Like I, I, I no, don't, no, no. I don't like that idea of doing that per se. Yeah, that's I, that's, I, that's Skyrim world building. That's not yeah. yeah. So I, I get I, I get that's a very fair criticism. I don't sure. mind you look. I I don't mind having having lots of interesting stuff in but not crucial stuff. content yes right. right but but not crucial stuff stuff that, that is like important to your basic orientation in in the world and understanding what your motivation is especially when you're playing a voiced character who is separate from you and right. your motivation from the character uh, your motivation might be different from the character's motivation right you have to understand the character's motivation clearly enough that you can relate to it and integrate it into your own experience your own play experience right. i couldn't do it i couldn't do it all i knew was that cole needed to Colt needed to break this fucking loop because he kept saying he needed to break the fucking loop. That's all. That's all. I, that's all. I Verbatim. Know about him, really. <laughs> right. <laughs> that um, goddamn Cole. Oh, that Cole. <laughs> yeah, I 100 percent agree. Everything that you said, Ben. Um, I I'm typically somebody who does not like if the lore is packaged in notes that I have to go out and scout. I'm I'm not about that life, but. I will say the lore that was available on the journey, on the set path that we were going, maybe not set path because this game does give you a lot of variety, but the lore that was available there, I was reading the notes. I never do that. It was interesting enough that I was going, quote unquote, out of my way to read the papers and see, okay, what's exactly happening in this world? Because it was intriguing. But at the same time, like Ben is saying, I didn't go super out of my way that I was finding all of the lore. So I had the same issues where I was like, okay, what exactly happening happened here? What's the full backstory? Because I don't know. I would have to like literally look this up. Um, another critique that I have of the game, and I talked a little bit about this with you, Thomas, before, but the ending, I did not, I felt like I loved this game because of the journey that it took you on exactly what you said, but it just the ending just did not stick at all and i feel like the way that they decided to resolve the story was very weak and it was safe can i can i can i was can safe, i yes. can i jump in on thomas's defense yes, um i like i like how deathloop does do a sort of uh james bondy thing and james bond movies don't usually have that satisfying of an ending I think thematically, the silly, goofy nature of the, the the story works, and mechanically, I think it it, it works well with the looping. I, I don't. I I think arguing story bits about this game is is a little counterintuitive because I think it works for the the nonsense and new game we have. We have we have a new game. We have Deathloop. That's it's it's a it's a cool game that I think will last for a while. Yeah. And I would argue that it has the best story of any game we've said today, besides Life is Strange. I got to think about this. <laughs> well, what I will say is that I, I think the ending was so much of it. It took a game that was probably, when I was playing it, probably like a nine down to like eight, a seven, maybe eight. Be, and it was like that because the game built itself up to be okay every, this isn't a spoiler because you're supposed to take out all of the visionaries that's what you're doing to right. complete the game yeah. and the without doing any spoilers is kind of hard but it's you build up to this climactic moment that never really happens if that makes sense. I can't really go into spoilers but it, the game builds itself up okay you're taking out these people and then when you get to the last one that you're supposed to take out, it just is extremely non-existent for lack of a better word. And it really left a sour taste in my mouth. Well, that's, that's has to do with how the game is structured in terms of how you're doing the runs, because mm -hmm. for me, it did like when I knew, Oh, I have everything I need to do my final run. Mm -hmm. It did feel like a, a mission. Like it was the final mission. Like it mm -hmm. had that feeling of, I know exactly where I need to go 
to beat this game. And it did kind of feel like a final mission thing. Also, I disagree because I feel like, while yes, there are a lot of stuff buried in the lore. I completely agree with that. But I do think for the most part, it makes sense because once you get to the twist, which I won't say, like the twist kind of puts everything in perspective. Mm -hmm. Like once you get to the part where we where the whole narrative kind of flips and your understanding of this situation kind of changes to me, that's when I was very close at that point to being on my last run. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, okay, this kind of clicked for me. And while I don't like where we ended 100 percent. Like that whole ramp up from the twist to the end, that was solid to me. It just at the end, I do agree with you that I was like, uh, eh, wish there was a little more here. Like my I could have done a little more, but I last, liked overall. Like my last critique on the story, just to um address something that you uh, that Taylor and Thomas that you both said, um, is that while this story might is probably the best story on on my list of game of the year nods it was the game that most needed its story to be good it was it's not bioshock for sure it's that not, most it's needed not, its, its story yeah. to buoy it and whereas returnal didn't need it i mean the story in returnal was gravy it was it was nice extra in my mm -hmm. in my opinion i although i haven't finished it um death loop needs the story it's most it's most carried by the story of, of any of the games on our list, I think. Um, and well, they aside, have strong characters history. as well. But like, yeah. they have it there. Uh, they just weren't able to wrap it up in a way that you didn't have to go looking for all this extra material to get the story that we wanted. Right. My other major criticism of the game writ large is the delta between what the game was seemingly advertised as and what the game ultimately ended up being. And this is speculation but i can only i can only surmise that the difference there is due to a development dead end where they were staring down the barrel of way too many variables to have to juggle for a way too complex game and they ultimately decided that we can't do what we want to do which is this idea that you can go anywhere any time of day take down the uh take down the visionaries in any order and it's up to you to determine how you're going to do that that's like the hitman design philosophy and we'll talk about hitman later yeah um but death loop death, death loop seems to promise that from the mm -hmm. jump it makes lots of even in the game itself so it's not just marketing right it's in it's in the ui that's trying to explain to you what the point of the game is at the very beginning which it just smacks you with over and over again at the beginning of the game because it's like it's giving you this sense that this game is a lot more complicated than it actually is that's fair. When it's it when it's really not, it's not complicated it, at all. Yeah, sure. So the, the game is the game is about figuring out the the proper intended sequence of levels to do a full run through of the game. You could beat and the game in like the, twenty the minutes. I, I've part, seen how you do that. <laughs> yeah. The figuring out part is not done by you. It's done by the game, and it's given to you in the form of these quests. That tell you where to go and when to go so that you can set up all the dominoes and, and watch them all fall at the end of the game in your final run. That is the yep, the Achilles right. heel to this game to me. The fact that they, they can't even trust you to set up the dominoes. Can, can I can I I'd like to throw in a little bit about gameplay? Because we talked a lot about the story and now you're bringing in some some gameplay uh talk. Um because I did I did mention Skyrim level building i like skyrim because of how glitchy and silly and bad it is and i think death loop has some similar fun to it where it is broken in a lot of areas a lot of things don't work a lot of a lot of techniques you can do to take down bad guys are kind of silly and and uh not fully fleshed out because it's not bioshock but it's it's funny it's a funny game it's a funny game kind of like with my with my um with with delta rune and 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 uh, uh psychonauts 2 it's got some real levity to it um and i i like it for that and i it, that that comes through less in storytelling even though obviously cole is is funny and he's always quipping and i i think he, he's he's quite charming but gameplay wise it's 
it's not you, Cole. No, no, I'd never say that about you. <laughs> um, but uh, I think gameplay wise, it's it's broken and silly. And it's not it's not on my list because I don't own a PS5 and I didn't play it. But I did play it at a friend's house. I don't I don't count that because I didn't I didn't really um you know put hours into it. But from what I played, I had a good goofy time. And I think that's worth something. I think the game um has a lot lot going for it, but also a lot going against it. Uh, it definitely wouldn't be game of the year. I don't think I don't think it could be game of the year. But I think gameplay wise, it's it's got enough going for it that I, I don't know about this this you know it tells you what to do sort of thing. But I think in in each level, you're given some freedom to do stupid stuff, which is what I liked about Skyrim. Is you could kind of cheat the game. You could cheese it, and I like that. I think, and just my last name before we move on, but I think the criticism you all have given against the game is super valid. Like, I don't, I don't really disagree with anything, but it kind of is similar to me to The Last of Us Part Two from last year, where for me, I give that game high marks, but I give that story like a seven out of ten, and I don't like, I, I don't like a lot of aspects of the story, but it's like how I look at it as how much. Fun did I have with this game? Like, what was the what was the moment to moment enjoyment that I was getting? Like, when I look back at it, yeah, I can kind of think about some of the things you said, but I can't take away when I was playing the game, moment to moment, going through these levels, trying to before I realize how easy it is. Like you said, Ben, because it there is a point in time where once you okay, you're like, oh, it is like kind of on rails a little bit. Like you kind of do understand that at a certain point, but before that, I'm just having a lot of fun playing this game. I think the gunplay, we didn't really talk. It's a game, we didn't really talk about the gameplay. Like the you know, the gunplay to me is very satisfactory. And I think the, the powers people? are amazing to me. Like the powers are incredible. Like it's what I wanted, like is what I imagine what a modern Bioshock is gonna be, like in terms of powers. Hopefully, I, modern Bioshock is better. <laughs> oh, it will be for sure. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, from a power standpoint, like as far as for sh like, I don't know a game that has better shooting slash power combat as opposed which, to this. Which, like, which powers did you get a lot of use out of, Thomas? Oh, teleporting. Mm -hmm. That that was because, and that's the other thing. Like when you go on these runs, like the powers kind of dictate what kind of run you're going to go on. So if you're trying to just get, like if you're doing Alexis's palace, for example, like you probably don't want to do a full on assault on the, the, the castle. You need to kind of sneak in. So you kind of pick your powers accordingly. And I love, that's where I mean an open level format where you kind of pick and choose what you're going to go in your loadout, what gun you're going to use, what powers you're going to use. I had a lot of fun just doing that. And it, it just gave me a lot of options that I didn't know the game was going to allow me to have. Now, obviously, the actual story experience is a little more on rails than I thought it was going to be. But I got a lot of enjoyment just out of the flexibility you had. Like, if you want to go on a stealth run, pick your stealth loadout. If you well, want to go on a ball to the wall salt, <clears throat> yeah. did you once you had shift, did you really unequip it ever? Yeah. I use the invisibility a lot. Um, yeah, I use, I use like I would go around and use them depending on what I was doing. Um, I, shift pro, I use shift the, the most. Can I can I bring up the the see, that to me that to me is like a big part of the game to me. Like being able to switch around and accomplish different things, like right. that switching around really did give me a lot of enjoyment. Shift yeah, is probably my it, most used for sure, but. I used a lot of them. Isn't that the most video game e video game mechanic that could ever be? Teleportation. Well, no, it's, looping. I mean, oh, yeah. I was gonna looping. say. I mean, shift is right, ripped straight out of dishonor. It's yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Just a blank ability. But, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for <laughs> looping. What were you saying about looping? Oh no, I'm just saying it's it's the most video game gaming mechanic that ever could be. Well, this um, I mean, this year was full 
filled yeah. with time loop games. We got twelve minutes. Time loop and, every and, and what was that yeah. dungeon one? The 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 crawling one. That one was fun on Steam. Loop um, Hero. Loop Hero. God, loop that was Hero. good. Game. There was Forgotten City and mm. Eternal, of course. Oh yeah! yeah. Wow. This is, is a time so loop. It, Ratchet and Clank. You know what? You're right. There were a lot. So. Yeah, and Ratchet and Clank. So you know what? It's not even that special. It's not even that special. <laughs> well, that to me is the least. And like that, that part's fine. But it's like, in the that, name. That it's in the name. Fine. Yeah, that part's fine. So to I think me, I think this... Ben I think Ben's right saying like it didn't deliver what was on the package. Yeah. Fair enough. I agree. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, Alfredo, there's another game that won't win Game of the Year. So sad. But, but I, we'll I like that these out. games are getting some representation. Yeah, Alfredo, um, this might have been my number one if I played it all the way. I, I just can't I, I can't do it with I can't do it with 20 hours, 20 hours in. Yeah, I have 15 right now. But my game is Shin Megami Tensei 5, a game that a game series that I've never played. I have played Persona 5, that's it, which is like a spin-off. But Thomas convinced me to get this game. Kind of, (laughs) because he was like, "Eh, you might like, you might not. But what sold me on it was that he said it was really challenging. Like I said, love to be being stepped on. So I was like, it's a JRPG and it's really like tough. It signed me up. So I was able to get it for Christmas. Um, Thanks, mom, for buying it for me. She didn't know what it was, but uh, I got for Christmas and my eyes have been glued to the switch screen all any any time i have extra time any single wow. time so this is I, a real newcomer because christmas was only a couple days ago exactly <laughs> i have 15 or 16 maybe 17 hours on it right now i play it like whenever i get the chance and i didn't think i would love this game that much because it's it's a game that prides itself on constantly switching out your party members and the way that this game works is that you have demons that you're using for your party members. And it's think of them like really, Pokemon. Yes, it's very, very Pokemon, which I don't like, but it's more Yu-Gi-Oh! Because the thing is, for this to succeed, for this game to succeed, you have to be able to fuse monsters and create new monsters and be okay with trading out your starter pokemon your starter demons to gain a stronger demon so that you can actually stand a chance in this world and in this game and i really didn't think i would like the fact that i would have to throw away you know oh this demon is my favorite and replace it for another one but i continually finding myself being so invested in the loop of okay this is my team. These are the specific skills that I need. So this is my team for this area. Okay, I confused to make this new monster who looks so rad as hell. I want to make this. Okay, how can I do? I got to catch this monster and this monster to make this. And then you make a new monster and gain all these different stats. I really love how it forces you to do that and how seamless it makes the whole process. And I really like also like how smart the battle system is. It basically, it the battle system is, to simplify it a, a bit, it, is, it basically forces you to have different types for your moves and different things have weaknesses and affinities for that. And I won't, I won't go into details, but basically it forces you to constantly switch out your protagonist as well as your demons load loadout like the different moves that they can do because certain enemies will be strong and weak to different one to different bosses basically so i really like how smart it is and how it forces you to continually change your strategies and it rewards you for doing so and i like being stepped on so i love this game because you know you might lose 30 minutes of progress but yeah I just am like, okay, let's go again because I made a stupid mistake or maybe I didn't and they just crit on me five times. You know, you never really know, but I really love this game and I think I will start probably buying all of the other previous four entries because of it. Just to piggyback really quick, um, because you didn't really talk about the story so much. Yes, that is the weak point. Yeah, I have played a little bit of the previous Shin Megami Tensei games, and they always were just too dark for me. I think this one strikes a really good balance, and I think that this Atlas has learned their lesson from the Persona series in that there needs to be a balance between 
how dark this game can get and also the side characters and the setting. So there's kind of a school setting there as well. And I think that part is very important. I think that it's a very dark story in terms of you are, you know, it's, it's weighing godliness, you know, and it's how important are gods? Like what are, like, what are gods? And I'm like, that's a very crazy question to ask the gamer. Like it's a very, it's very heavy subject matter and you feel the weight of it. But I think, and they've done that with the other Shin Megami Tensei games. This one has a lot of levity that I think it works to its benefit where it doesn't feel like such a drag, you know? And Mm -hmm. I think that they've struck a really good balance with this one. This might have been my game of the year if I play more of it. I I had, I'm I'm still going to play it. I'm having a great time playing it like Alfredo is one more quick thing about it i also really like how in persona 5 it prides itself in having you know that social social aspect as well as the you know battling dungeon aspect and this game is firmly just choosing not to do that whole yeah, social fuck aspect that. Fuck yeah you don't have to grind your relationships you don't have to do all of the running around towns and all of that no it streamlines it and says this is a classic jrpg and we are just going to be you know, you're going to be a badass in this world. And that's what this game is. And I really like that. I guess before this game, I didn't realize how I, how much I didn't like the social aspects of persona, I guess. And this has kind of opened my eyes to it, but yeah, I can't say enough praises about this game. I love it so much. If persona is an extrovert, Shin Megami Tensei is an introvert and I love <laughs> it makes for sense. it. Excellent. Well, thank you for bringing in. Shin Megami Tensei into the conversation. We've got one more game to talk about. I did not mean to save this one for last, but I'm not ha- I'm not sad that it is the last game. Uh, Clems, you want to take this away? Hitman 3. Thrust. The game of the year. <laughs> Hands down. All right, see ya, Hands everybody. Down. Good night. <laughs> Good, Good night. Have a great night. Uh, no, Hit- Hitman 3 is... Um, it's it's fantastic. It's everything we've talked about wanting in each of these games tonight, I think. And I you know, um I do love my Metro Dreads and you know whatever, you know, who cares? Who wants to discuss that? But uh Hitman 3 gives you such unlimited freedom to do whatever you want. Um you're given a task and you do it however you want. It's also a game that has the most incredible settings and the most incredible uh, experiences in such quick succession. One minute you're in the Burj Khalifa. The next minute you're in some shady castle. The next minute you're in the suburbs. It's, it's just all over the place and it's, it's fun each time you play it. And each time you play it, you can experience it a different way. It's not a game that you have to go in. Oh, stealth mode or aggressive, just what you want. And, and the AI in the game makes it so that, it's always a unique experience. I, I truly recommend Hitman 3 to, to everyone who likes playing fun games. Yeah, I, I, I talk, I've sung the praises of Hitman 3 many times. Um, and I'll, I'll always talk about these games because I feel like they don't get talked about enough. And um, IO Interactive has been um, really just the only game in town in terms of stealth games recently yeah. which is is a bizarre thing to think about you know splinter cell is not here metal gear solid is not here many of the other you know uh thief is not here in any in any uh particular capacity right. um so hitman 3 is like just owning the zone and yet hitman 3 is hitman these this world of assassination trilogy ever since t- hitman 2016 is not some grab bag of stealth genre stuff it's its own game it's its own uh experience that no other stealth game is going to give you no other stealth game gives you gives you what hitman gives you this idea of social stealth dressing up in other people's costumes and then walking among them um this idea of like speaking with with your target before you kill them this idea of all almost anything's a weapon you pick up your tools as you go. You know. Would would you almost would you almost call it RPG stealth? 
Yeah, because I, I, you do you do role play. You do actually role play in the game. Right. Uh, in fact, 47 role plays, which is yeah. what's yeah, funny. Yeah. It's, like, it's like you're controlling 47, then 47's playing an RPG, should you so choose. <laughs> <laughs> kind of um, like It seems like The Witcher 3, because that's kind of what The Witcher 3 is, where you're playing as Geralt, and Geralt's doing what you say. Yeah, well, so I mean, a lot of the third-person games follow that that model in the main, but what right. makes Hitman different is that is that Agent 47 is like a master of disguise, even though it's it's comical because he's always got the barcode on the back of his head and he's like <laughs> covered he's, up with the chef's yeah. hat. Some, yeah, some he's bald like, white guy, you know. He's this jacked, bald white dude in in like in China, and nobody's like batting an eye that this, <laughs> this jacked, bald white dude with a barcode on the back in. of his head. Yeah. So um, so yeah, there's there's like there's a comical element to it. And and I don't want to oversell it. I mean, Hitman's got plenty of rough edges. One of these things that's like, um, this may this may bother a lot of people where the animations in Hitman are very economical. You walk up to a costume and you put the costume on, and forty seven goes like this, and you like, and then it, the costume is just on him, and he's like, he's fully <laughs> dressed. Um, there's there's lots of like corners cut, but when the corners are cut, it's for the sake of playability in the game. It's for the sake of um, interesting dynamics it's for the sake of um reproducibility and predictability which is an incredibly important thing when you're looking at this this massive puzzle box space which is what each of these levels are they're huge mini mini open worlds that allow you free reign to assassinate certain targets in any way that you can manage you're not going to be able to manage every single way but Anything that you can you can find a way to do is is you know available. It's feasible. You can figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there, and there's there's levels of challenge, right? When you first go into a mission, play the story missions. The story missions are going to act as guided experiences that get you familiar with the levels. They're going to immerse you more in the world. They're going to get you to help you get to know the characters a little bit, the people that you're going to eventually kill. Once you're done with those story missions, you'll have a good enough understanding of of the of the maps that you can try to go in and get creative. Once yeah. you get creative a few times, you can try to challenge yourself. You know, do silent assassin, do si silent assassin suit only, sniper assassin. Like, there's tons of different ways you can go about all of these things, and many of them are rewarded. Yeah, you 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 boil it all down, and it becomes Donkey Kong, right? <laughs> Uh, no, 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 I, no. What I mean about that is, is you boil you boil all the mechanics of the game down, all the uh, all the uh, AI, all the all the things you can do. When you're playing Donkey Kong, uh, you're going through, and there's there's usually like tiny little branching paths, like two. You get a fork that's two ways you get to go, and you you can observe your your enemies, and you can choose which way you want to go based on how they they act. And you you know you restart the level. In Hitman, you really really have to pay attention to everyone and everyone's patterns can be augmented in some way that gets you to your goal and i i really like that um you can you can find uh, a butler and you can poison a drink the butler's drinking and he'll give it to the target that you're trying to assassinate or you can just run in distract the butler or kill him and just shoot the guy and there's there's a, a like not a hundred, but there's plenty of different avenues to get to assassination at the end, and it really it really does. You are indeed the the husk that is uh, Agent Forty Seven. You have to fill those shoes and figure out the puzzle. Yeah, puzzle box a great way to, s to describe these games because um, they're they're really immersive puzzle boxes. Oh, I wish I. I wish I played this, but I will definitely buy it. Yeah, see, this, for is, sure. this is the heartbreaking thing. It's like no one, no one thinks to look twice at Hitman until you. I, I blame. I blame the movie. I blame there was. You know, it. it I love they that made movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I it, haven't it, seen it. it. I saw it in theaters. I love that. It's movie. passable, but once once a video game makes a movie, and that movie flops, it kind of stains the whole franchise. Mm. That's how awesome. Sonic Assassin's Sonic's Creed. making a comeback. <laughs> But Sonic's doing a good. See, Sonic's games are bad, but its movies are good. That's well, the three was bad. That was a bad one movie. So, well, y'all anyway, convinced that, me. I'm, I'm buying it right now. 
Yeah, you should. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm buying 100%. it right now. That was Hitman 3. I, I just got to say, the icing on the cake is the fact that you can play all of the levels from the previous two games in this game if you own those yep. games. And, and they're, they're great levels. levels. And yeah, they're great. And if you have a next-gen console, they have, they have all the enhancements and they have all of the new mechanics from Hitman 3 applied to those levels. That's so cool. Which is amazing. No, well, Who else does yeah. this? Right. That's revolutionary. And plus, all of that shit is available in VR. Yeah, and you know what? Amazing. Ben's right. Ben's right. No one talks about this game enough. Like... These games are truly fun, truly cool. You feel like a badass while doing them. Uh, they're they're thought provoking. They are engaging. They are everything you want in a game. They really are everything you want in a game. But no one plays them. It's mm. it's just it's a shame. It sounds like it's so underrated because even me, it sounds like something that's so up my alley but i'm just always like oh, i'll get till later later like it's i guess just because it doesn't have that iconic status to it or no one is saying that this is a masterpiece you have it, to it should but people it are should. saying you should play this game i think a lot of the, tr the a lot of the trouble i think came with hitman 2016 where it that was the time to get mm -hmm. everyone's attention because episodic, hitman 2 right? and 3 are iterative sequels they're not you know they're not breaking down yeah. the Foundation it's not uncharted one to two. Mm -hmm. No, no. I mean, it's like it's it's iterating on on the on the incredible foundation that Hitman 2016 laid. Um, but that launch of Hitman 2016 was so mired in confusion and 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 uh, controversy because there was a episodic model attached to the thing. That yeah, a lot it, of bad PR. It off. Bad PR has ruined these yeah. games. Let me yeah. ask you this: it, What's is there a leap between Hitman two and Hitman three? What do you mean? Uh, just, just a leap in the experience. Like, you know, if, for game of the year's sake, I feel like this should be, I know it's the best probably version of Hitman, but does it do much different than the previous you Hitmans have done? You, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in real quick. I don't think so. I think all the Hitmans are good in their own right. And I think they all deserve their spot as game of the year. Um, It doesn't do anything extremely different than the other hitmans that's why you can slip into the old ones um in this game and it doesn't feel jarring because it is the same formula but it, it's it's not the it's not really the the mechanics of the gameplay that are are uh that are the main centerpiece of it as as ben was saying it's the fact that they're a puzzle box it's the levels yes yes it's the, the fact levels that there's five new yeah. levels means that it's a totally new experience because the levels are what what yeah the levels are the game right yeah yeah you're selling me I, to me emergent gameplay is is one of my favorite things in games that's why i like grand theft auto so much so like i absolutely want to play hitman 3 like i think it sounds incredible um and 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 ben you said there was vr support for it too yeah so. and it's coming it, it's coming to pc vr it's not going to be on quest i doubt i doubt that it will be on quest but it, yeah. you can play it with your quest on a PC. Hey, I may do that next that's year. Awesome. I mean, um, that's it. They're fun games. They're fun games. Yeah. Yeah. And all of, your all of levels, them. To your yeah. point about levels, Taylor, um, I think yeah. Hitman 3, you know, there are great levels in the first two games. Um, you could even argue that the best levels in the whole series are in the first two games. But I think every single level in Hitman 3 is a contender for best of the trilogy yeah. whereas the other two games had weaker levels and stronger levels every single level with the exception of the last one which is kind of a one-off um closer uh every single one could be argued for for best level cool yeah for exactly different reasons so anyway yeah hitman 3 is a uh, totally fantastic um and everyone should check it out Ooh, we are coming oh. to the end of our game of the year discussion and I feel like this is the hard part, but mm -hmm. since we're already two and a half hours in, um, we might want to uh, change things up a little bit. We've got four Game of the Year contenders that each are tied <laughs> tied with Can two Can you votes. name those out for us? Yes, those are Metroid Dread, mm -hmm. Returnal, It Takes Two, and Hitman 3. Um, so it depends on how you guys want to take this. We can just vote on these games based on whether we like them or not. We can vote on these games based on, you know, the arguments that we made and whether we swayed one another. We can vote on these games based on um, 
arbitrary biases if you if you'd like <laughs> can can i politic really quick Thomas, alfredo how much does it work to not have metroid dread be your game <laughs> don't do this to me if you it's if you bring up def loop if you put def loop a little higher up i will remove my metroid dread book how about that oh there you go there you go this I is like this is robberies what it is no this is <laughs> this is collusion this is bribery this is this is a lot name of it whole bunch it's of all those things <laughs> I would say this, just just my thoughts on these four. Metroid Dread seems like it's not doing nothing that new and special, and it's very divisive amongst us, right? And Hitman, I feel like, is a great game, but it's kind of been what it's done before. Killing Simulator. Um, yeah, I mean, but it seems great. All these games are great, I would argue. Three out of five of us haven't played it. Exactly. So important. I think really the, the discussion comes back down to Returnal versus It Takes Two, which I side on the, re- the side of Returnal. But um, to me, it's between those two. I don't know. I, I think we have two votes for Dread, right? I would assume so. Because I ain't taken down It Takes Two. <laughs> you you have taken down It Takes Two? I'm not. I oh, okay. Used- okay. Yeah, we have two. Silent. We have two votes for Metroid Dread. We have two votes for all of these. I am more oh, willing to put. I am more willing to put Hitman above Metroid Dread. I think. Okay, End so what are the votes? I'm. T- it takes two. That's my vote. Oh, are, I'm, are you, I'm Hitman. And Cole, I'm you're Hitman. Returnal. Yeah, I'm Returnal. You're Returnal. What are you, Ben? I think but, guys, you got to think about it now. The, the think about the, what pushes the boundaries. He takes games to the next level, tries different stuff. Metroid Dread does not do that, and I don't Both think Hitman. I'm not. Vo- Hitman I'm not even does voting for Metroid Dread. Vote yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even voting for Metroid Dread. Like I would put It Takes Two, even though I hadn't played it as a game of the, as you our collective game it. of the year, over uh, over Hitman and Metroid, just based on the Can fact it? that it's it's new and different and strives to be something special. Okay, so we got it so, takes two for Cole. This is we no, 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 Returnal, Returnal for me, Returnal for you. Yeah, Taylor is Hitman. Ben, you ben, are. I don't know, man. This is tough. <laughs> all, all three of my picks are here, which is makes ah, uh, this is rigged. Ben rigged. An unfortunate it. time ben rigged. It. <laughs> the, I think the reason that it's rigged is because I've played so few games, so I just chose the the, the best ones that I wanted to play. Um, so we have one for everything right now, and Ben is the deciding factor. Is that what's happening here? No, I, well, I didn't say I didn't say out of these games I would pick Metroid Dread. Oh, I thought you picked that one. Mm-mm, I didn't pick anything yet. Um, so every okay, no, 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 okay. So, so out of the four, out of the four, out of the four, I think our viewers are right. Let's vote for two and tally them up. Okay. So, so let's write okay. let's write down two that we out of the so list of four five. we have. Okay. It's right down two. Okay. Okay. And whoever gets the most votes wins. Thank wait, you, man. Wait, 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 what are we doing again? What, what are we so doing again? We're picking, we're picking two. Votes. Two? Okay, so, I got you. So, okay. we, what, what, so, Ben, list off the, the four we've got again. Metroid Dread, Returnal, It Takes Two, and Hitman. I'm going to put it on my phone because I don't have paper. <laughs> okay. I got it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, ready? me too. I'm good. I'm ready. Plans, take it away. Number one, Hitman three. Okay. Wait, is anyone writing this down? Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm telling it. I'm telling it. And number two, Metroid Dread. Thomas. Can y'all see that? Oh, it's backwards. <laughs> no, no, we did not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Metroid and Returnal. Okay. Cool. Returnal and it takes two. Okay. Oh God, if we had a three-way tie again, I don't uh, know. Oh my God. <laughs> you added uh, a mark. To I have, I have. It takes two and Hitman. <laughs> wow. <Okay. laughs> They're all tied up right now. By the way, I have. Uh, wow. Alfredo, 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 Alfredo. Don't change it, Alfredo. Don't change it. Don't it change takes it. two and Returnal. Oh, okay. So it's a two-way tie between It Takes Two and Returnal. No, all Returnal right. got three. Returnal got three. Yeah, but it takes two. So now, now we each vote amongst those. Now let's each yeah. vote amongst those. Okay. Okay. Crap. One, 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 only one, not two. Does anyone want to give a last argument for this before we do this? I That's a good point. A last, like, just a quick. What is a better next gen experience? Returnal. 
That's my <laughs> in your opinion. I mean, I mean, I mean I that's no, that's not. I mean, that's. Just I, I would say, what is a unique game of the year experience that you possibly have never had before? Because you both. guys all know what I'm gonna vote. Both. But that's why I'm voting. Yeah. Your, 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 whatever criteria you want to choose is yeah, your criteria. Whatever you want. We yeah. won't have a tie here because there's five of us. So. And we'll go reverse. I'll go first this time yep. whenever you guys are ready. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. You guys are ready now? It takes yeah. two. Yep. I also did it takes two. Returnal. Returnal. Oh my gosh. Re- Returnal. Wow. <laughs> I'm playing it tonight. I'm playing it tonight, too. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, yeah. can I say that when I came into this, I had I did not think Returnal would be our game of the year. So I Ben, I'll give you credit for this because this was a this was a great idea. I like this. Yes, thank Excellent. you, uh, thank you, Matthew. Bliss. Yeah, thank you, Matthew. Thanks for, thank for solving that last little puzzle there for us. Yeah. But but it did it worked out good. Yeah, that was uh, Alfredo. It could have been worse. I can't. Yeah, I can't be bad because you know what's funny, game. y'all. Returnal was not any one of our single like. Favorite or best game of the year? My game of the year was RE4 VR. Wasn't even on my list. Yeah, it wasn't you know, on my top five. <laughs> it was you know, none of you ours. Know, you know what I think that you know what I think that speaks to is I think I think contradictory to everything we've said this year or about this year, I think we had some very very good games this year. I agree. I yeah. completely agree. Before this, I was like, eh, <sighs> but I did have a very hard time picking even my top five. So. This is not a Dragon Age Inquisition year, y'all. This is. This, I will. I will always stand by. This is the to me the worst year in my gaming <laughs> life. <laughs> what? I'm not lying. Uh, I'm not. Or, yeah, guys. That's uh, a whole honestly, topic for. That's we, a whole topic. We, for look, we can go back. We, we can go back to 1991. Wherever y'all want to go back look, to. There hasn't been a game year worse than this. We're gonna have think. this as a topic at some point next year. But I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the Dukes of Gaming podcast. First off. Want to give a shout out to Ben for hosting this whole thing, keeping this whole thing going along. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Did a great job. Everybody did a great job today. Thanks for all our viewers listening. Want to close the year out right. Stay safe. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you end your year right with the Dukes of Gaming podcast. Our links are below in the socials. Also, make sure you... Obviously, we post on... Every week we post on all the podcast services. We post on YouTube. We stream on Twitch. Follow us. Leave a comment. Support us if you like this content. And with all that being said, thank you for tuning in. And I bid thee fare hey. well. Hey, and you can't forget, Happy New Year. Let's have a great year of games. Let's have a great 2022 of games. Well, 2022 is going to be lit, y'all. It's going to be busy. Yeah, it's going, it's going to be. I'm pumped. 